I think they crushed them, actually. <laughs> no, I think they did. I think they did. I think there was an indication, that, you know, a few minutes later, that they'd actually really? put a lot of pressure on his testicular uh. sack. <laughs> This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics, and I'm delighted to say it's time to say a very, very good morning to Mr. Mike, a porky, a parry. Very good morning to you, Mr. Parry. And a very good morning to you, Mike, and uh, a rip roaring show ahead tonight. There are so many issues that we've got to look there at, are. you know what I mean? Many, many of them. In yes. and around the world, the sporting world, the world of international intrigue and politics, and yes. you name it, it's got to come on the agenda tonight, well, in my um, view. It's all on this show. I in mean, my this is view. why we do this show, because it straddles literally yes. the behemoths of uh, both yeah. sports and non sports. Sure. Uh, we go to the White House, we go down to Sydney, yeah. down yeah. under with uh, Sandra Lee. He's got yeah. a lot of uh, stories to talk to us about. Yeah. Uh, we're going to cover the England uh, selection. Mm. Uh, of course, you'll be celebrating the fact that your campaign to get Ross Barkley Absolutely. into the squad was successful. But you must also be uh, have a sort of bittersweet tinge as well because Wayne Rooney not in the squad at all uh, for the first time ever since he was available to be picked. Yeah, when he was 17. Yeah. yeah I Which his is first quite... Game. I mean, I, but nobody's really made much of that, but it seems yeah. to me to be a bit of a watershed moment. Well, yeah, but I, he's had such a, an eclectic season yeah. in the terms of of, uh, successes and uh, disappointments, I mm, suppose. Yeah. And it always comes to this. And it contrasts, doesn't it, with uh, Jermaine Defoe getting back yeah. in the squad. Now, you know, a lot of people have said, oh, well, you know, that's brilliant because old Defoe there, you know, he's a great lad, scoring lots of goals. So, yes, he is. But, I mean... He's very much a short-term solution, isn't he? He can't, can't possibly well, be part admit, of England's future. I must admit, when you see uh, mm. Rashford, Vardy and Defoe as the three strikers, mm. I mean, I, I, with no disrespect to any of the three of them, mm. I thought to myself, really? Is that, is well, that, it's is nobody's that, fault. Is that, is that the giant force that England now is? It's nobody's fault that Harry Kane's injured. So, well, uh, no, it's not. But, yeah. but I mean... And, and he's, have... he's, 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 his boots are on fire at the moment, so he's a, he's a, he's a terrible That's probably miss. how he got the injury. Yeah, probably how he got the injury, But, yeah. I mean, the point is, is that in the end, surely, you know, a bit like Spurs mm. haven't been able to look beyond Harry Kane because they're yeah. now sort of wondering who they're going to get to replace him. Yeah. If the replacement for Harry Kane is any of those three players, and mm. Rashford will be a great player, I'm sure. Yeah. It's just a look very impressive, you know? I don't understand why Theo Walcott has been dropped from the squad. I, I, that's, well, to Theo me, Walcott. the most ridiculous decision. Yeah, Theo that, Walcott uh, has always been uh, what you would call a sort of fair-weather player, hasn't he? I mean, well, he, he may he be a fair weather player, but I mean, do you not remember his goal against uh, Bayern Munich? You know, I mean, it, 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 it was yeah, but spectacular they, they in lost, its execution. They lost ten two to Bayern Munich. It doesn't matter that goal in well, itself. It, does matter. it doesn't because that's an eleven man team. Yeah. Theo Walcott yeah, didn't individually lose ten well, no, two to, to but, uh, Bayern but, but Munich. But he's part of an Arsenal team, which which as a collection of individuals. But has he was done... the only one on the night who played, yeah, wasn't he? I understand that. But yeah, my, well, you seemed to be having difficulty. I want to say this to you. I'm only going to say it once. You've been very aggressive all week. No, I haven't. Yes, you have. I think if you read Twitter, you will find that people have been quite shocked no. at some of the things you've been saying. No. So I'm going to try and adopt a slightly more genial tone with you to see yes. if that makes any difference. Well, you know, to see if that calms you down any. I have to I have to put the lid on some of your excesses and when I do that I don't have you, any excesses. Uh, you know, you, you tend to get a little I bit I do not irksome. have any excesses. Excesses do not include, you know, dissing my entire family and uh, mocking a uh, little nice little recordings that I made when I was From a 50 child. years ago. Yeah, that doesn't oh, What am I supposed to do is... like give it some sort of artistic appreciation? Well, well, no, Whoa, what, that's fantastic. Why don't we do... put that in the Smithsonian? Well, what you could do mm. is just say that's very nice um, you know what a lo- lovely memories you must have of your father who's now sadly passed away but you didn't do that uh, but that's okay but I, thought, I, I mean thought... I know that you are a very cruel and, and a bitter and twisted person I mm. understand that but that's okay I thought but one I'm aspect, just going to I'm just going to uh... try and talk you through how to be calmer that's all I thought one aspect of our working relationship is that we had to be brutally honest with each other I don't mind you being honest yeah okay well, but I just I'm mind you being, being honest, cruel yeah. and it's not really for me because I've yes. said I mean there have been people actually running a campaign on Twitter to mm. get you to apologise for that and I've said to Today. Yes. Look, I don't need an apology. Of I don't expect an don't. apology. Yeah. Because that's not a relationship that we have. Mm. Mm. I just don't want the people out there to think that you're a cruel and heartless, horrible yes. person. Because yes. I know that you're not. Why do you think Gareth Southgate dropped Theo Walcott? What? Why do you think Gareth Southgate? I'm just Southgate talking is... about our relationship here. Yes, well, I'm as well because no, I'm, not. Ask, I'm asking you no. your opinion. No, no, no. You don't I'm asking want to your talk esteemed about opinion on, on my esteemed opinion. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Why do you think he dropped Walcott? Yeah. Well, because Walcott doesn't deserve to be in the team. Walcott doesn't even play regularly for Arsenal. I think that's a bit... Uh, well, that's harsh. true. 
Well, that's the truth, isn't it? I mean, Walcott is not a regular starter for Arsenal. If he does start, he doesn't play 90 minutes. Strikes me. He quite often gets taken off. Yeah. Strikes me that Theo is always sort of the fall guy because he's, he's such man. a nice guy. Well, he's the nearly uh, man. He's such a nice lad and such an honest boy and lives such a, you know, a straightforward life. And, and he always seems to be the fall guy when an England manager wants to make no, a I statement. So. You know, wants well, a few Rainey's, headlines. Well, Do Rainey's I know? Let's drop Theo Walcott well, because well, he surely, won't cause too many problems. Well, surely he would he's get too more, well brought well, up. No, that's nonsense. I mean, you've got a bit of an obsession with Theo Walcott. I would have thought, surely, Surely, mm. more likely to be um, the full guy in all of this is Wayne Rooney. That's why I'm saying I'm surprised that not mm. many people have made much of it because this is effectively the end of Wayne Rooney and his England career. Yes, remember but... I said to you, I don't think he will uh, surpass the next level that he wants to surpass. Well, well, 25, which is Peter Shilton. Yeah, so, I, I said, I don't think, and you said he's only got another six games to go, and I said mm. I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, I, so I don't think it is going to happen. I think the reason why there's not been like a huge kind of you know um, shock horror. Uh, what was the name of that author who painted the scream? Hey, eh? Edvard Munch. Edvard Munch. I yeah. think the reason why there's not a Munch screen type reaction to the Rooney situation is because I think people regard it as an historical natural development in the channels of time. Maybe so. Which are you know which are the football yeah. of, the story of English football. Maybe uh, maybe that, you know what maybe, I mean? maybe that's true. But it's still and quite, it's, and it's, it's just come quite, to the final but chapter. It's still quite significant though, isn't it? The fact that he's basically now out of it. The yeah. England squad. He, he will probably no longer ever yeah. play for England. Yeah, that's how I would say uh, that. And I mean, going into yeah. this tournament, mm. uh, the World Cup, he was still the England captain. Yes, but the problem is when players get towards the end of their careers, and it, it's happened over the last two or three years with Lampard, with uh, John Terry, with Stephen Gerrard, it is something, it's it's quite irritating that their careers dribble out rather than mm. snuff the flame out. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. And um, maybe... This is the time now for Wayne Rooney to step forward and say, "I have taken immense pleasure from being immense both pleasure. immense pleasure from As being Steve both McLaren. an England player and England yeah. captain, um, and I wish the team the very best. And I really have to go forward. So I would like to now declare that I will no longer be uh, available for selection for England. That I think would be great. That would because be, I, th- I think that yeah. that slices the whole argument in two. And yeah. Rooney puts the lid on it and says, "Right, I put the the watertight lid yeah. on my England career. I'm very proud of it for the hundred. Yeah. Is it 100 118. Uh, something like yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, you're the guy that wrote the book about him. I yeah, mean, that's you know. right. It was, yeah. Uh, Rooney really Tunes. Still available at all good bookshops. Yeah, it's out and, of date now, though, and, isn't it? Sorry? It's out of date now. Well, like, you see. By the... approximately 10 years. No, the thing is, it's historical. It's an historical tome. Well, you mean historical like that uh, rather nice old recording I played you of myself and my sister? Well, it's not 50 years old. It's uh, it's 10. It's about a current person still uh-huh. around. You well, know I'm what a current person. To... I'm still around. No, but I'm still on recording. Yeah, but my dad is not. My dad's not the star of that. I think he is. I think his instructions were. He's barking no, out no, no. you. Do another one. No. He's Move not. on. No. Do something <laughs> else. Say do something else. Sounds anyway. like you, the children, are getting beaten on that occasion. Yeah. Not me. Well, anyway, listen. Here's the point, right? Mm. Surely uh, we were told that one of the reasons that uh, Wayne really didn't go to China yes. was that he wanted to stay in this country and be available for selection because he wanted to beat the Shilton record. If that's now the I'm case, sure that was his ambition. If that is now the case, why mm. doesn't he just call time on his Man United career while he's at it and head off to China? Well, it's only hours since he discovered that he's no longer in the. Um, immediate plans of the current England manager. Yeah. So you, what you've just said could well be happening right now. Mm. He could now be on the phone to Paul Stratford, who's been his mentor and his agent and his uh, advisor and his, uh, you know, his... Um, deal maker. Deal maker. Absolutely good uh, good um, expression. Thank that. you very much. Uh, for the past, uh, well, since about 16, for, so for nearly 20 years. Uh, well, not nearly 20 years, is it? Just over 15, 16 years. And... I'm certain that that conversation was going on because Paul Stretford's um, job, and he's the best at doing this mm. in the world, I think, yeah. is to extract the maximum amount of return out of Wayne Rooney's whole career. And he will presumably now see the fact that Wayne Rooney is no longer a regular or even... Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Eligible England player, yeah. almost, in the terms of Gareth Southgate. Well, I mean... Get, he, he will now say that um, we have to seek value for Wayne Rooney elsewhere. Well, you have to, you'd have to say for, yeah. for Wayne Rooney to get back into the side, or yeah. to get back into the squad... Well, he won't under he's, Gareth He's going to have to do something remarkable. He, yes, he? yes, he is. You're absolutely I mean, right. I can't imagine what that would be. Well, if he's still at Manchester United, and if he scored, I don't know... Ten goals in their last, um, however many games it is. Is it uh, they got left eleven? Is it something like twenty-eight, thirty-eight, ten? Last ten games, mm. and uh, and that promoted them up into a place in the top four. 
which would be quite significant, then I think Wayne Rooney would be back in the fold. Wayne Rooney hasn't been given the starting opportunities at club level to be able to impress at international level. One, but there's a reason for that. Because yes, there he's is, no yeah. longer the player that he was. And Jose Mourinho, who you have often well, said is yeah. the best manager in the club manager in the world, yes. uh, has, has deemed him sort of unfit to be a starter there. Well, I think a bit unfit is a little bit harsh and a cruel word. I think Jose Mourinho and the way he wants to shake Manchester United does not regard Wayne Rooney as an essential part of the way he wants to shape Manchester United, but still regards him as a central part of the Manchester United squad. There's no doubt about that. Well, it doesn't matter whether he regards himself yes. as that. And he may regard no, no, him. no. Jose Mourinho, re- oh, Mar- Mourinho regards Wayne Rooney as that. Oh. But I think you're absolutely right. I think now um, Wayne Rooney has been given two very distinct messages. He's no longer a first-team starter at Manchester United. He is not even now in the England squad, no. let alone not being a first-team starter right. for England. This is the watershed of Wayne Rooney's whole career. Yes, as I was and, saying. And you're absolutely right, without a shadow of a doubt, because of the worth of Wayne Rooney and what he's still got to come, a serious, serious debate will mm. now be going on within the portals of the, you know, Wayne Rooney Inc., you know what I mean, incorporated. Wayne Rooney Inc. Yeah, to yeah. find out where he goes next. Yeah, I have I'm, no doubt about that. I'm going to say China and I thought, I, or you know America. What? You know what, there'll be a pretty dramatic uh, announcement and development yeah. on what Wayne Rooney's doing, I would imagine, well, I think within the next uh, weeks. I think within the next 24 to 48 hours, somebody out there will realise it's quite a big deal because I've yep. just pointed it out to everyone. And yep. you might mark my words, the papers will be full of it. Mm. But it's not at the moment because I haven't thought of it. Rodney says this, happy St. Patrick's Day, boys, from Belfast. So we'll talk about that. Why? It is St. Patrick's Day. Why? Why? Today's St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. What's wrong with you? Well, OK, so do you celebrate Anzac Day, do you? Uh, I, well, if, if, I'm t- if I'm broadcasting... To the areas where Anzac is celebrated. Yeah. Yes, I do. And in fact, I would. Yeah, yeah I don't remember you. You just, ever. Don't, you just don't so. like the Irish. Anyway, we haven't got time for this. <laughs> no, no, I love. I, I like the this. Irish very much. No, I've you got don't. lots of good Irish no. friends. No, you haven't got any How Irish dare friends. you put slurs like that mind into shutting into... up for a second? Well, look, you shouldn't say un- untruthful things about me. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. What makes you think I don't like the Irish? I'll come back to that. This is Talk Sport. <laughs> This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics coming up a little bit later on. Uh, we're going to be talking to Sandra Lee down in Australia. Jared Rizzi is going to join us as well from the White House uh, to tell us how Mr. Trump is getting on. Uh, he seems to be getting more paranoid by the day. Uh, Hobbsy says this at the two mics. Looking forward to a non-gerrymandered porky quiz. No second set of questions and no bribery under the table. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm, I'm st- staggered, really, that people still make these kind of accusations, given that yes. for the last several weeks we've been mm. filming live mm-hmm. the porky quiz, and it yes. will be filmed live again today yes. on Facebook. So that there's absolutely no question mm. of, of of any uh, jiggery pokery because um, you know, because we're both being watched by camera well you say that but i mean you know slate of hand and all that kind of stuff i mean you've been to a number of slate of hand yes you've been to a number of casinos haven't you um, Not very around many. the world not very many i've spent a few weeks in las vegas and places I mean, like that and you know full well you know full when was well. the last time you were in Las Vegas? Was it for that uh, abortive trip to see a fight that never was? No, no, no. Went there on some gambling mission. Did uh, you? Yeah. A gambling mission? No, it's not did. like you. No, well, it was a sponsored gambling mission with a gambling company. You oh, know, right. we went out there and that's when we stayed at uh, Wins. You know, the... Uh, Steve Wins. Steve Wins, the hotel that's yeah. got the uh, Maserati um, dealership in the lobby. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't think it's just Maserati. I think it's quite a lot of the old yes. uh, top cars, right. you know what I mean? Because that's what you want to do, is win enough money to buy Maserati. Well, I suppose so, and then drive it out the uh, yeah. the showroom. And that's then get, right. it st- and then get it jacked. And off you go. Before you get to the second set one of One of the things that most shocked me about... <laughs> uh, yeah, that's right. Most, one of the things that most shocked me about Las Vegas yeah. was uh, these <laughs> these uh, flat-back lorries now driving around, you know, yeah. with huge screens on the back. Yes, and the screens show you uh, very exotic women. Well, this is in Vegas. This is in Vegas. Oh, right. They're driving them down the strip. Oh, they didn't have that technology when I was there. No, no. They're, so they're driving down the strip, right, and they've got these uh, these uh, screens on the back, and these very exotic women are pole dancing, OK? Oh. Uh, and, uh, and gyrating around. Are they life-size? Oh, it's bigger than life size. Bigger I mean, than life yeah, size. bigger than life size. Blimey. And they're just riding around. The women like are giants, like yeah, giant yeah, women. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And the women are smiling at you. You know, obviously they don't know it's you, but they're smiling to the camera. They don't you know, know it's I mean? you, no. And that kind of stuff. And then that would be some trick. And then a caption comes up. They're saying, not inside the lorry, are they? No, they're not inside the lorry. No, no. This is uh, pre-recorded and put on these screens <laughs> on the back of the lorry. Right. But then the caption comes up saying, you know, if you'd like to have sex with this woman, what? dial this number. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a family show. This. Yeah. Well, exactly. Of course it is, and it's not something that I would normally. 
normally talk about. I was but taken, I, mean, I, was, I was so I was so repulsed by you I'm know sure the you were. the uh, What's the, number? the availability <laughs> the availability of the female <laughs> form um, like that. I, yeah. It shocked me terribly. Well, the thing I was mm. most amazed by when yeah. I went to Las Vegas and yeah. I only went there a couple of times was the complete and utter sort of um, uh, freebie life that you could live there yes. because you could go and eat for hardly any money at all. You can you could go and drink for hardly any money as long at all. As you're playing cards. All they wanted matter. you to do was to go and spend yeah. money at the table. Oh blimey, you get the ninety nine. I love the fact that you could smoke inside the casino. Yeah, I love right, the fact yeah. that there was no uh, clocks anywhere. The 99 Sam breakfast is always in the room right next door to a gambling hall so that you only have to nip out for five minutes, yeah. have your 99 cents breakfast and then come back in. And I'm not sure if they still allow it because I can't remember it happening last time I was there, but certainly when I went there a few years back, you got free drinks if you were sitting at the, uh, mm. at the uh, blackjack table. Right. And all you had to say to the courier was... Um, uh, refreshments, please, yeah. or, or something like that. And, right. and that was a, you know, there was a code word for mm. it, and some lady would come around and just keep filling your and glass just up. just keep filling your glass up, yeah. It was watered down drink, I think. But, well, uh, yeah, but it was still yeah. free. Oh, yeah, it was, yeah, you yeah. Know, and the food but, was anyway, look, that's well. by the by. Now, listen, talk about footballers, right? I want to expand this into the way footballers live today, OK? Yes. Because this is, to me, very, very interesting. I have a very high regard for Gary Neville, because I think, as well as being a footballer, he is an immensely capable chap, you know what I mean? He's and, not a very capable manager, though, is he? Well, that, that's one area of his life, which I think has come and gone. I think he's accepted that, you know, we dipped our toe in the water then, it didn't quite work. But th- th- listen to this as a story and, and compare this to how footballers behaved, say, in the era of when England won the World Cup or just after, or even go back just 25 years, OK? Yeah. Gary Neville's property development plans have divided opinion in his home city, prompting national headlines and protest positions, but the former footballer remains defiant until yesterday when he admitted that his proposals uh, had failed. Speaking at a conference, a property conference in France, the former Manchester United and England football captain revealed he had asked council bosses uh, not now to consider plans for the £200 million development St Michael's uh, in Manchester city centre in their current form. Uh, Mr Neville, 42, who's also a TV pundit, and his former teammate, Ryan Giggs, 43, want to construct two skyscrapers, a five-star hotel, Mm. a block of flats and restaurants in the centre of Manchester. Men of the people. I mean, it's just amazing, isn't it? Isn't that not astonishing? I mean, these guys have got so much money. That they could pretty pretty much do whatever they wanted. Yeah, of course with it. they can. I mean, they could build a, a yacht. Yeah. They could probably buy an aircraft carrier. Yes. You know, they could develop some some because they've got so much money. Yeah. They've got to do something with it. Well, that is absolutely right. But what I'm saying is, a lot of footballers would be content really to sit on their fortune and just enjoy life. Whereas, you know, for for a, a former England fullback to want to get so. Uh, actively involved in such huge projects. I mean, it, go, it goes on to say, to the horror of local history and conservation groups, it would involve the demolition of the former Bootle Street police station. Mm. I think a few Manchester United fans have spent a few nights in there after a few rumbustious games. I would have games. so, yes. Uh, the Manchester Reformed Synagogue, the first post-war synagogue to be built in the city, uh, and the Sir Ralph Abercrombie... Uh, said to be the inspiration for the pub in the BBC drama Life on Mars. All right. Uh, a petition to save the pub alone has gained more than 5,000 signatures. So this is a pub that he and Giggs want to knock down, is it? Yeah. The, well, the Ralph Abercrombie. Do you know this pub? Um, I bet you I've been in there. You must have been. I, mean, I must spent have spent a lot of time there. in Manchester. If it's well, a... well, I worked at the Express there for a year. That's what I mean. And, so... and we used to drink up and down Dean's Gate and Piccadilly, yeah. you know, every night. So I would imagine I probably have been in there. Right. Um, but I, I just think it's quite astonishing that, um, you know, a, a man who was a, a... I mean, some former footballers have done great in business, and the, the b- best example is probably um, Black... Uh, sorry, Wigan's uh, former owner, uh-huh. Dave... Dave you know, Whelan. Dave Whelan, who he broke tells... his leg, didn't he, in the cup final? <laughs> well, it's, that goes everywhere oh, with really. it, doesn't it? Has he ever told you about breaking his leg in the yeah, cup I final? Yeah, I think he has, know? yeah. I think he's mentioned yeah, it once yeah, or twice. Yeah, exactly. But the thing is, I mean, guys like Ryan Giggs... I think it's Giggs, astonishing. Guys Ooh. like Ryan Giggs and Gary yeah. Neville have been at the top of their profession and at the top of the wage-earning sort of yes. pay scale yeah. for many, many... Many years, well, right? not at the highest though, because when well, Gary Neville started and when he was an established United player, when he first played for England, yeah. I bet he wasn't earning more than about you know fifteen or twenty grand a week. Mm, I mean, yeah, what but I'm that's saying a lot is, of money to be making over the course of ten or twenty or thirty years. Yeah, but a player playing today at the highest level, from mm. the age of twenty-one to thirty-one, will earn could earn quarter of a million pounds a week. You see what I mean? Yeah, but, astonishing but that's amounts quite, of money. That's quite a rarity, though, isn't it? Well, I mean, it is, but they do exist, don't they? I mean, for instance, yeah, but I mean, the fact that you're thinking now yeah. twenty thousand a week isn't really very much. Well, I mean, well, it's an awful lot of money of course uh, to anyone so yeah. if you're, what I'm saying yeah. is if you, even if you're making 20 grand a week for 10 years yeah, that's right, as yeah. a relatively lowly paid yeah. member of a Premier League team that's a yeah. fortune you know yeah but I mean to then have an impact
impact on a city where you really started as a schoolboy footballer and mm. you're building blinking great skyscrapers in the middle and uh, and blocks of flats. Yeah, and, but they're the new they're the new sort of billionaires, aren't they? They are, yeah, yeah. But I think I think it's terrific. And, uh, and well, I it's ad- terrific up to a point. I mean, if they're not exactly uh, yeah. uh, sort of celebrating the heritage of Manchester and what they want to do is flatten everything that went before them, then maybe that's not such well, a good thing. Well, I, th- I I think with progress, you're always going to get this clash of uh, of of destiny with dynasty, aren't you? you know well, what I mean? Well, you are. But I mean, um, I know that you would probably yeah. sit on the side of uh, mm. uh, of just wiping everything out and starting again. Well, no, I wouldn't want to wipe everything out. But I mean, uh, you know, I I really love the architecture of the northern cities, and I think you've got to re- uh, uh, really uh, have d- due respect for excuse me for their culture. But at the same time, for any city to move on, it's got to look a lot more like um, you know, like Singapore than Rochdale, because well, otherwise probably. people will not go and invest there. That's you know? true. But yeah. I mean, uh, five star hotels in Manchester are aimed at people who are travelling to Manchester who have got an awful lot of money, yeah. aren't they? They're not necessarily yeah. going to do much for the city itself, if you see what I mean. Well, yeah, but I mean, if people are travelling to Manchester to do business, it means business is being done in Manchester. That creates wealth. That creates jobs. Well, not that is a good thing. Well, it should be. It should a good be. Thing. But I wonder if this is all about an economic football bubble. I suppose is what I'm saying. That basically yeah. all the people with the money of football, mm. all the people who are coming into Manchester yes. and staying with that kind of money of football. Yeah. You know, Jose Mourinho, as far as I know, is still living in a hotel. In so Manchester, you wouldn't get involved in that, would you? Well, in what? Well, if you had a lot of money from having worked in a particular profession, yeah. you would then go and rest your rather ample backside mm. on the sun lounger it's of... another unnecessary uh, uh, side. On, on the sun lounger of a yacht which was cruising around the Caribbean. I wouldn't, know. And No, you would. You'd no. be very happy there forever. Well, you would. if I didn't have to That's make, why if, you and Prince William if, are very similar. If I didn't have to work, mm. um, I, my, there's not, we couldn't be more different, actually. No, I, no, you I inherited. Similar. Do you know how much I inherited from my, uh, my father when he died? Uh, tell me. Nothing. Uh, do you know which I inherited Nothing. from my father when he died? No. Nothing. Well, there you are. Right. So okay. neither, so we have more in common with each other than yeah. either of us have in common with Prince William, who yeah. inherited from his father, mm. uh, who hasn't yet died, yes. not only a title, mm. not only uh, the crown, yes. but also vast amounts of money mm. which, with which he can go and spend yeah. uh, willy-nilly. Yeah, but I get the impression that Prince like. William uh, is the sort of guy now who's... And his formula for life is similar to I yours. I don't know why you've got it in for Prince William. No, no, I haven't. It's the second time you've attacked no, him. No, no, his formula for life is similar to yours, and that is to get the maximum reward out of life for the minimum I effort, right. which is basically your philosophy well, he can in life. Well, fly a helicopter, which is more than you can do. But we'll come back to this. What's that going to do with uh, it? Well, he's achieved quite How a lot How do you know I life. can't fly a helicopter? Because you can't do anything. I've flown yeah. helicopters. Oh, don't talk rubbish. I've flown helicopters. Right, well, let's see you fly a helicopter right now, yeah. tomorrow. We'll leave out of this place and I we'll could go do down it. I and, do it. In, and we'll get into the heliport and you can fly a helicopter. I, I could do it. Good luck yeah. crashing into the river. No, I could do it. This is Talk Sport. Talk sport, we are the two mics. And so of why, course, are we, uh, uh, why are we playing that song? So you like Fleetwood Mac, don't you? Yes, I like Fleetwood Mac. Yeah. Well, it's from Rumours, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. What Little about the lies? title? What the title? Little Lies? What's that got to do with? Well, I don't know. It's just a nice song, isn't it? Oh, really? What, do you think there's some... Well, you see, you're getting paranoid. You are the Trump of talk sport, aren't no, you? No, no, no. You're getting more and more no, paranoid. No, 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 not at all. Well, you think there's some rev- uh, sort of rev- rev- reference. Well, you, 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 tried to, uh, you tried to rubbish the idea that I can fly a helicopter. Well, all right, let's hear how you can fly a helicopter. All right, I've when had... Have I've, you had any kind of uh, training in helicopter uh, flying? I, I've, I've had three helicopter lessons. <laughs> Are you laughing at how many hours do you need to have flown in a, in a, in a helicopter as the pilot before you're given uh, permission to fly it? I think it's about 20. 20 hours? I think it's about 20. I think you'll find it's a few more than that. Maybe it's 40. But I think you'll find we it's used a few to more have, than that. No, quite seriously, we used to have a staff member here who worked on the PR side of things who was also a very highly qualified helicopter pilot. Highly qualified? Yeah. Well, either you're a helicopter pilot or you're not. Well, let me tell I you. I mean, I want you to be highly qualified helicopter pilot. It's like saying yeah. it's a very highly qualified bus driver. Well, not really. You could say you're a highly qualified, you know, um, driving instructor because you teach people at, at an advanced level, the police and all that kind of stuff. You see yeah, what I mean? if that was true, that yeah. would be fine. But, yeah. you know, a highly qualified helicopter pilot means nothing to me. Well, OK, I'll tell you what it was. This guy was literally so qualified and so respected in the uh, world of... Who uh, was this guy? Pat. 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 Pat who? I don't know. 
don't know. You don't know? I don't know, but his name was Pat. Was it like the, the Pat figure on Saturday Night Live? And no. I used to be in New York. No, no. There was this person called Pat, <laughs> yeah. and nobody knew yeah. whether it was a man no. or a woman. No, this is... And they used to try and work out whether no, no. Pat went to the women's toilets or the men's no, toilets, because no, no. Pat was one of those no. people. Pat was very much a male, and uh, I can't remember his surname. I know he... exactly who you mean. Yeah, exactly. He used to work in New York. Pat Malone. Thank you very much indeed. There yeah. you go. So now you know that this person exists, yeah. right? But I also know him to be yeah. something of a, shall we say, exaggerator. No. No, yes, uh, he well, was. Well, certainly, he was. certainly not in his ability to well, fly helicopters, OK? Well, well, he was a very interesting man who I could tell you many stories okay, about. OK, well, I'll tell you an interesting story about him. Yeah. Right? He worked in our PR division, so... Uh, I, what was he doing working here in a PR division? I a journalist? I don't know. I've no idea. But anyway, you know, these things happen. Some of us have dabbled in PR during the course of our careers. Well, you know what I mean? I've never dabbled yeah. in PR. Yeah, I've right. never had to sink that well, low, to oh, be honest. Oh, no, it's not sink that low. It's, yeah, get, it it's getting our business from a, the other perspective, the other side of the fence, no, you see. No, it's Anybody becoming... who wants to round their career should have done no. It by now. No, it's becoming lower yeah. than a snake's belly. <laughs> yeah. That's what it is. Anyway, so I said to Pat, I said, you're really interesting. I didn't know you were a helicopter pilot. He said, oh, yeah. Not only is he a helicopter pilot, right. but you know you know um, that one of the great ruses when we were in the newspaper world in Fleet Street was you used to go to the, when you're in any position of power like me, uh-huh. you'd go to the motoring editor and say, uh, David, get Porsche to uh, well, you would if lend you your wished. Porsche. I mean, that you? is now called mm. um, a sort of um, abuse of power, actually. <laughs> yeah, it probably is, yeah. So it was, David, listen, could you get Porsche to bring you a car? to yeah. road test, please, because um, you're going to give it to me and I'm going to uh, use it for the weekend to impress a new girlfriend I've got, you know? Yes. So, uh, so duly, the Porsche would arrive and uh, they'd park it downstairs. Yeah, yeah, you... we know about all that. Yeah. Tell us about the helicopter. Well, what I'm saying is, Pat was so qualified as a helicopter pilot... Did he's... he have a helicopter? No, but th- no. Th- th- this is the point. He-, he would get a call from somebody like um, Suzu- who used to uh, Sikorsky, Sikorsky, right? Sikorsky, or somebody like that, or Puma, or somebody who made helicopters. Puma. You sure, it wasn't the football boots people, eh? You sure it wasn't the football boots? No, no, Puma. no, no, definitely. And and this magazine, you know, like sort of Helicopter Weekly, would ring up and say. <laughs> <laughs> no, they would. No, they would. They Helicopter would. Weekly. No, they would. They okay. would. And they'd say, hey. Rotary Blade. Yeah, they'd say, yeah. That's I'm sure right. it wasn't yeah. just in the Rotary yeah. Club. Yeah. yeah. Maybe it was called The Joystick or something yeah. like that. But no, anyway. that was another magazine. Yeah. <laughs> yes, probably was, yeah. <laughs> so they'd ring up and they'd say, uh, Pat, we've. Um, are you aware that Puma have just uh, built a new sort of, you know, double turbo five so, so, blade? Sorry. So yeah. let me get this straight. Yeah. So so Puma Magazine, yeah. right? The no, no, house... no, no, no. The heli- sorry, the Helicopter, Helicopter Weekly. Weekly. Yeah. Right. Would ring up a guy yeah. who was sort of moonlighting as a PR for Talk Sport, That's right, which at yeah. that time was sort of held together with sell and yeah. tape and a few quid. Well, sort of, yeah, in the early so days. So he was yeah. so specifically uh, trained mm. as a yes. helicopter pilot. Yes. Uh, that they somehow t- he had to make a living writing press releases yes, for right. Talk Sport <laughs> for me. So um, <laughs> so then so then a load of old so then they'd say, look, um, Puma have just developed this new twenty five million pound helicopter. It would probably cost a lot more actually, but anyway, no. about twenty five million. Would you uh, mind uh, road testing it for us? <laughs> Take it on a flight. <laughs> No, no, no. This what, is, you're this... telling me that they didn't have any regular pel- helicopter test pilots? No, he was known. He was a, he was what a was helicopter. What was he doing here? Well, I can't answer that question. All I can tell you is now. Are you sure he wasn't some kind of fantasist? He was not a fantasist. Did... I've, I've been in a helicopter with this guy, so I hope I he's not a fantasist. I, I might not have been here. I so anyway, him. so anyway, he he was employed <laughs> to road test helicopters, to right. fly helicopters around, and then write reports on how good or bad they were, and all this for yeah. for this helicopter magazine. Right. So anyway, one time I said, "Look, I fancy becoming a helicopter pilot." He said, "Yeah, I can help you. I'm a." A, a, a trainer as well. I'm a teacher. You I know. can't believe uh, any of this yeah, at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. I find this a staggering story. Well, th- this is an absolutely I true mean, the story. idea that people like you and him would be allowed to fly over the, yeah. the sort of streets of London. Yes. Um, you know, it's, it's quite shocking. Well, really. you, funny enough, you should say that. I, I once said to him, I said, do they do any health checks on helicopter pilots? Yeah. And he said, no. Honestly, no. in those days, and I hadn't been diagnosed. Well, with that's a, not true actually, because I know somebody who flies a helicopter, yeah. and they have to be tested well, on a regular things basis. Things have changed then. Things have changed. Mm. Honestly, he said they were very rudimentary. And secondly, I said, you know, when you like hire a helicopter, because what you do is you hire helicopters. So I go down to Rygate um, Airport, R- Heliport, yeah. which is near me in Surrey, to Stockbroker Belt, Rygate, and 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 they're flying over my house all the time to and from Rygate, you know, and uh, and and I said I want to you know, I want to start lessons. He said, yeah, sure, come down on Sunday morning. Mm. So we go down. And so it's just you and Pat? Me and Pat. Yeah. And it was absolutely classic. We walk out to a hangar. He he, he pulls the door back. Yeah. There's this glistening helicopter, right. which is then rolled out, you uh-huh. know, on a, on a platform. What kind of hel- helicopter was it? It was... Let me think. It was a four-seater. Right. Right. Jet so, Ranger, maybe? 
could be something like that. I mean, I don't know the names of helicopters. Well, you should have remembered them since you were learning how to fly one. Well, anyway, so so we get in, and uh, obviously, you know, the old... Uh, it's it's that fantastic moment when you see the rotor blade starting, you know, and it just goes, you know, click, 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 and all that kind of stuff, and then... Yeah, but there's a bit more to it than that. Yeah, it is. Then it's bouncing up and down on its sort of suspension, and then you have lift-off, you know, and you take off from the ground. I don't know what you're laughing at. So, anyway... Um, the idea of this guy and you in a helicopter. Yes. So are you at the controls of this thing? Well, you get up in the air and, and you're flying around and all that, and then Pat says, because you're all wearing headphones because yeah. of the noisy engine. So it's just you and him at the moment. Just me and him. Yeah. And he says, right, OK, Mike, um, you take over in five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. And I grab my joystick, and I'm then in charge of the <laughs> helicopter. And right. it's and it's I quite... I find it staggering. No, it is quite... Once you're up there, it's dead easy to fly, because all you've got to do is hold the thing steady. Dead easy? Yeah, dead easy. Right. Hold the thing steady. Why don't they crash, then? Sorry? Why do they crash? Well, they crash for all sorts of reasons. They mm. crash for reasons... The, the, the biggest reason they crash is when a helicopter pilot loses that division between the sky and the ground, which usually happens at sea. You can't even see where the sea is. In fact, Pat told me a great story. And well, we've we got time for it. Well, uh, it, it, we'll have to come back to it. Well, we're going to have to come back to it then, because it is a great, great story, I was going to tell you. And um, A couple of tweets uh, have come in as yeah. well that I'd like to bring to oh, your right, attention. Oh, right, OK, yeah. Uh, I can't believe I've laughed so much at the phrase helicopter weekly, says Dazza. <laughs> no mention of it being a journal. Yeah. Uh, Richard says yeah. Porky's flown on Concorde, yeah. and he's there for an astronaut. So flying a heli- helicopter will be a piece of cake for him. Exactly. Um, uh, here's one from Emma who says, mm. remote control helicopters, me thinks, mm. Porks, me darling. Oh, no, uh, I've had I plenty of those. In, and Porks is spouting skyscrapers again. Yeah. I thought I had time warped. I don't think so. And uh, James says, stop lying, Porky, fly a helicopter. You must be joking. You can't even drive your jalopy. Your plate. This is very harsh, honestly. You've See, given me a terribly bad image. Well, here. this is the trouble. Nobody believes a word you say. Well, I'm sorry, but I've got the facts to back all this up. Coming up next, we're going to talk about the real fantasist in the world, and that is, of course, Donald Trump, who's currently occupying the White House, and uh, without too many uh, well, other people. That's a terrible to help thing out. to say about the President of the United well, States. Well, he's of just America. said, he has just had his press secretary release a statement in which he has said, uh, which has been roundly rebuked and denied mm. by GCHQ, mm. that basically uh, Barack Obama hired. British intelligence services to spy on him. Mm. If that's not the work of a fantasist, I don't know what is. Well, you don't know if that's true or not. Well, the, the, everyone who's involved in it says it isn't true, and I suspect it isn't true, because an awful lot of what he says isn't true. A lot of people in politics tell a lot of lies. Really? Would you not agree? Uh, some Would of them, not agree? Some of them do. I mean, you know, Richard some Nixon. Some of them do. You know? Some of them do. Yeah. But if you want to defend Donald Trump's position, you're more than welcome to do so. We're going mm. to talk to Jared Rizzi coming up next. Mm. This is Talk Sport. <laughs> This is not to be confused with a little video that we made uh, just before you went up to Wigan. Uh, of course. Where I did what can only be yeah. described as quite a good impersonation of Donald Trump. We, may have, we may have to revisit yeah. that. Yeah. Do you know, I've got the wig actually sitting at home. Right. Um, which is slightly off And your children have been trying it on. They've been trying it on, yes, yeah. And, yes. and, uh, and, and so's the dog, actually. Yes. But, uh, but yeah. we'll come back to that another time because we're going to speak to now, genuinely, mm. uh, Jared Rizzi, who is, of course, uh, the White House correspondent for Sirius XM. Yeah. Uh, it's been another interesting week in the life of Donald Trump and mm-hmm. the uh, 45th presidency. <laughs> uh, he's had his travel ban... Mm. Uh, um, uh, overturned once again yeah. uh, by a federal judge over That's in right. Hawaii. Uh, he's also uh, had his uh, his press secretary come out and say that Britain, uh, in the guise of the security services, mm. have somehow been helping Barack Obama to bug him. Yeah. It's all very strange. Jared, uh, very good morning. Welcome back to the show. Well, well, good to be with you guys. And I was not expecting to have a particularly British angle to talk <laughs> about with you when, when we were discussing this several hours ago uh, and arranging for me to come on. Right. But here we are. Uh, Sean Spicer has come out and said that GCHQ uh, has has done some things which they have flatly denied. Um, I enjoyed, by the way, the uh, so- somewhat lacking in the normal British understatement here. Utterly ridiculous yes. and should be ignored. I, I find that uh, that is not uh, per what I would normally uh, ex- expect it's, it's, from... It's, mm. it's, no, it's not. I mean, he's encouraging others to use undiplomatic language in the same way that he does, really, <laughs> isn't he? I mean, Mike Parry here, he mm. has a point when he said earlier, well, I mean, it's not the first time I'm, I was basically saying that, you know, as Donald Trump said himself, he's a bit of a fantasist. Mm. You know, I mean, it's not the first time that, that, that the politicians have told lies, uh, lies or yeah. been economical with the truth, yeah. but but he's taken it to a new level, isn't he? 
Well, and this is the thing. I mean, what we would be talking about in any other circumstance is, you know, the president's budget, which is out today, the uh, the, the health care reform that uh, House Republicans and Senate Republicans, some of them, a few of them actually, uh, growing fewer and fewer, uh, shrinking fewer and fewer, rather, are, are trying to put out there. Uh, we would be talking about any of these policy matters, but instead we're talking about something that the president tweeted out at the beginning of the month and has provided no evidence for. The White House still saying that he's going to be vindicated somehow right. it feels a lot like the the birtherism where mm. this is just kind of this this untrue thing that is just metastasized and there's no way rhetorically out of it that's what it feels like to someone who's been in the room for both of these right. but but it's it's very strange now to see uh, not only you know th this is a five eyes relationship these countries do not spy on each other and to accuse of that is is something really I mean forget the fact that he's accusing a former president of doing it but it's also this this completely unprecedented and I'm getting tired of saying completely unprecedented mm, to be yeah. frank mm. yeah, right. Jared isn't uh, this another example of how anti a politician the president is on the basis that most politicians, when they drop a clangor and make a terrible mistake in a, in a you know, in a one off statement, then try and cover it up with all sorts of spokesmen saying what the president really meant was this. Not Donald Trump. He made a statement. Everybody tells us it's it's a ridiculous statement. It's not true. But he just keeps saying it. He has no. not employed, has he, a team of PR professionals or hired hands or even, you know, White House staff to get him out of it. But what they have done, guys, is, is they've moved the goalposts. You know, what the president originally said and tweeted was incendiary. He said mm. that the former president, there's, there's three big parts to this. The former president, part one, former president Obama, that, that's a big accusation, uh, 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 set up a wiretap, also a big accusation, yeah. of Trump Tower before. I mean, there's three provable parts to this. None of them have any evidence so far. And by the way, the House and Senate intelligence committees have said, no evidence so far. They haven't seen. The president tweeted as if he already had the evidence. All it seems that he's done is essentially look at a couple news reports mm. that were talking about opinion columnists from conservative right. talk, meet, talk radio, mm. basically. Mm. You but, guys, mm. but, but a little bit farther to one side. Yeah. And, and now we've moved... Yeah, a, lot, to, a lot farther to one side, actually, if you don't well, mind me saying so, Jack. Yeah. But, but, but here we are now where they're <clears> saying, oh, any surveillance ordered by anybody that just happened to target then-candidate Trump. That's a big shift of the goalpost. We are playing on mm. a totally different field now. Well, mm. right. I mean, it's a little bit like the Sweden thing, isn't it, where um, Donald Trump came out and said that, you know, look at what happened in Sweden yeah, last night. Yeah, you know, night. Lowly's right. Um, and when it turned out that they were being... Uh, he'd been watching something on Fox that was a documentary, a report mm. of some kind, they sort of watered it down to say, yeah, but, you know, look at the, look at the figures. You know, yeah. Sweden's a very dangerous problem because... But then the a immigrants. few nights later, in fact, it happened, didn't well, it? Well, it wasn't... It didn't <laughs> really happen. It's just that, yeah. it's, it's, as you say, they set this hair running, yeah. and then... They they decide that mm. they're going to justify it in some way because even one small part of it yeah. uh, might be true. Yeah. And with the other part of it that was very much on uh, on display today was attacking the media. It yeah. was Sean Spicer was coming out here, sword and shield in hand, and the argument was, uh, we are going to uh, talk about how you guys are talking about this story, i.e., you're, you're citing the House Intelligence Chairman saying that there's no evidence, but where were you guys when the House Intelligence Chairman said maybe Russia's not such a big deal? Mm. As if the media are playing this game of, I, I don't even know what, but... The, that is where mm. they're most comfortable with yeah. us as the enemy, yeah. and that is a place that's uh, it's a very dangerous place to begin a presidency. Mm. Mm. Um, this is this sounds a bit odd, this, uh, and it may be that I was reading it the wrong way. But did I honestly see a tweet from an official McDonald's source, one of the biggest companies in America? <laughs> oh, yes, this is a great story. Yeah, <laughs> which which today looks as though they publicly have um, barracked the president and said, we don't want you anymore, bring back President Obama. What's behind all this? I think this is just some, you know, some social media staffer who is probably going to get fired at the end of the week anyway, deciding to go out in a blaze of glory. I don't think right. there's much to this beyond uh, a very public brand with a very big profile. Well, I mean, you're, talk you're talking about a world well, brand. You're talking about one of the well, most famous. Yeah, but I mean, this has happened in the past, hasn't yeah. it, where, where somebody gets hold of the Twitter account. And, yes. and funnily enough, uh, I saw a tweet earlier on today 
from someone where McDonald's is so kind of inept, as quite often some of these big companies are, yeah. that they put out their apology and their correction, mm. but the, the the offensive tweet mm. was still pinned to the top of the... Yeah, exactly. That was so good. And, and the tweet says, wow. you are actually a disgusting excuse of a president, <laughs> yeah. and we would love to have Barack Obama back. Yeah. Also, you have tiny hands. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> very, uh, very odd. Yeah. But, I mean, I suppose that illustrates once again the depth of animosity towards... Uh, uh, your president, President Trump, amongst a certain section of society, and they're not going away, are they? I don't know if it demonstrates anything beyond the one person who is probably, uh, and by the way, a company that is now probably using two-factor authentication for their Twitter account. Yeah. But, you know, the best part of this to me was watching uh, people tweet in response to this. Right. The commercial from, I think it was the 90s, where Donald Trump and Grimace, the purple giant, the uh, puppet character mm. of McDonald's in a commercial together because that's how deeply ingrained the, the President Trump is in the American psyche. He's been on, you know, television shows, not just his mm. own, but like half a dozen sitcoms and commercials for McDonald's. Right. I mean, he's just been everywhere. And so the fact mm. that he's on the other side of the McDonald's uh, ledger is, uh, I guess, uh, some kind of uh, uh, cosmic yeah. balance. Sure. This is what struck me as interesting as well, because mm. on the, on the uh, at the very moment, in fact, that the, the, the federal judge was blocking his travel ban sort of part two. Um, he was walking out to a rally. Now, I don't think I've seen, apart from the odd military-style mm. um, visit that, that the president's always used to make to, to a sort of military base, mm -hmm. Trump has sort taken this whole carrier. yeah, he's taken mm. this whole uh, sort of popularity rally thing very, very much to heart. You know, he much prefers to go out and, and, and preach to his fans, doesn't he, rather than actually talk to the press. Well, there's a couple big parts of this, and you've actually nailed on something really big here, because normally presidents don't even file for re-election for about three years. Mm. He did it within about three weeks, mm. and he's already started doing these campaign rallies. They're different from public events of the president because they can actually scoop up your information and then pester you for money, and he also gets to control who's in the room, which is why you'll see fewer people who are protesting at these events because they've controlled the room. Mm. And yes, the president really does enjoy that. He seems to... I guess he almost gets energized by it. But, yeah, it's these campaign-style rallies two months into the presidency. It's very weird as a White House reporter to be seeing that so early and so hard. He did address the ban, saying that uh, he thinks the courts are making a big mistake. Right, yeah. taking that we're all going to be in, in dire danger because of this uh, this judicial decision. Mm. And I suppose that remains to be seen, but it's interesting that the court used his own PR machine to say, yeah. well, they were on TV late, uh, you know, mm. a few weeks ago saying, actually, the second part of the ban uh, isn't any different from the first part of the ban, and so we're, therefore we're mm. not allowing it even more. But what about the visit to Britain? Because uh, there's been some um, suggestion that, that that might be delayed slightly. This was before he accused uh, GCHQ of bugging him. Uh, so I wonder whether Theresa May is now going to withdraw the offer because she might because she's been under pressure to withdraw the offer anyway. Yes, yes, yes. he comes yeah. from a state visit. Will she use this as an excuse to say, "Well, hang on a second. If you're now accusing us of bugging you, uh, then maybe we shouldn't be quite so friendly after all." I'm not sure, but the uh, the Taoiseach of Ireland was here at the White House today, and this is, of course, a multi-day affair. Mm. Where he, the, the Ireland's prime minister is basically the opposite of the Dalai Lama for American politicians. <laughs> Everyone wants to meet with him. Everyone wants to be seen meeting with him. Right. And he actually promised going to Ireland first. So maybe in this current climate, Ireland's a bit safer for him to go visit. But mm. at this point, it looks like uh, that is still on, and the president's still making promises to go to a number of places yeah. around the world. Good. Very, very fascinating stuff. Well, this is Jared, thank you very much indeed. We'll catch Thanks, up with Jared. you again soon. Always good uh, to good talk to you. Good luck with the uh, uh, with the impending uh, White House press briefing mm. uh, because it doesn't seem to be getting any easier for the journalists, which of course it shouldn't be. It no. shouldn't be any easier for him. But no. uh, but it's all very interesting stuff. Katie says this, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, Please, can you wish my husband Jack a happy twenty eighth birthday? He listens to the podcast every day and saw you at Dingwalls last year. Really? Yeah. What's his name again? Jack. Jack, very happy twenty eighth, mate. And believe me, life begins at twenty eight. I Does know it? from my experience of it. Okay. Excellent. Thank you very much indeed. We've got loads I'm coming nearly up. Double 20, uh, eh? uh, nearly double, twenty. Nearly double, and plus a bit more. Sandra Lee very soon, and the Porky Quiz, of course. We've got mm. a bonus show uh, to talk about this weekend we as certainly well, have, because yes. we're back on the warm-up tomorrow. Yes, we at are, 11 Saturday. Uh, but also on Sunday, yes. uh, we're doing a little uh, couple of hours uh, from four to six. Four to six, that's a late afternoon. one. It's a late, late one. afternoon, yes. And uh, it's a great time, really, to do a show on a Sunday, because then I will repair to the family uh, seat oh, yeah. in Surrey. The family seat. Yes, mm -hmm. and... And uh, join in with the traditional uh, Sunday roast. Was that right? What are you having? 
uh, beef. Roast beef. With Yorkshire pudding. Very nice. Yes, which is rather nice indeed. Thank okay. you. What time will that be served? It's quite late to eat, though, often. Once you, you won't get there till about seven. Oh, I'll get there about, I'll get there about seven. Yeah, well, that's fine. That's Isn't fine. that so late for Sunday roast? No, not in English country houses. No. Honestly, it's not. No, well, no. They're no, not they're in an English country house. This is well, the place uh, with, the, uh, yes. with the automatic awning. No, it, yeah, that's mean, right. It's, about, yeah. it's not exactly what you'd call traditional. It's, you know, it's yeah. not Blenheim Palace, is it? It's the modern equivalent of, don't worry about that. I'm not worried about and it. And in fact, funny enough, you getting... think they've got an automatic awning at Blenheim Palace? Oh, they've probably got you several. Know, when of them. the Marcus of Blanford has everybody round yeah, for a yeah. few uh, glasses of gin, a few glasses. And he of goes, gin, oh yes, yes look yes. at this. I press this button over yeah. here, and then this awning comes out. Ah, but you see, yeah, that... how new very rich am I? Ah, but that's not the automatic aspect of it. The automatic aspect is when the sun comes out, the awnings come out. When it starts oh, raining, what, the awnings it's... come out. Oh, what? So you mean it's uh, it's generally it's it's moved by um, changes in the atmosphere? Yes, that's right. Well, it's got barometric yes, pressure. It is. Yes, what a load it of is. rubbish. It is. Yeah, but, I don't but, believe you. But uh, funny enough, you you can now link those two stories together. The hell helicopter and the uh, family seat yes because funny enough when i took off from rygate and then i was in charge of the controls oh yeah what did i do i don't I, know i flew over the family seat did you yeah did you wave to I everybody bust it. well i you know i didn't i didn't wave it. there's nobody in the you garden must have been at the terrified time. no i wasn't i wasn't terrified i don't believe that you how far did you drive, drive this helicopter for for about five minutes five minutes yeah. how far is that well it depends how fast you go well, how fast were you going about 350 miles an hour, I think, they go. 350? Yeah, I think so, yeah. <laughs> don't they? Are you sure? Um, no, maybe it's a bit... No, I don't think you had a helicopter that was going at 350 miles no, an hour. No, I think you're right. I think it's about 120. Mm. I think it's about 120 miles an hour. I think if hour. you were going at 350 yeah. miles an hour in a helicopter, yeah. you would not only have buzzed the family yeah. seat, yeah. you would have uh, ended up in a massive fireball right you, in the middle you, of the you're awning. You're probably right. But anyway, listen, the story I need to tell you, is a very serious story, yeah, is um, Pat, of course, being Are a... we still talking about this? Well, this is a good story that we didn't have time to tell because we got up to the news. OK. Um, Pat is amongst people who are designated as uh, trainers, you know, um, helicopter pilot trainers. Yeah. Uh, that's why I was in the same helicopter as him. And he told me um, that Matthew Harding, we all remember very well, who tragically died in a helicopter... In a helicopter accident, ...accident, yeah. right, coming back from a Chelsea... No, he wasn't, actually. He'd gone on a business trip to the north, mm. but I think he was using the helicopter to get back for a Chelsea match yeah. or something like that. Right. But... The light had just gone. Mm. The darkness had come down. Now, the, whichever company uh, Matthew was with that day, they provided a pilot, and the pilot was a relatively new pilot. And I'm not saying for a moment that he was incompetent. He was a fully qualified pilot. Right. But he hadn't had as many night flying hours as some other pilots mm. uh, who do that sort of Wasn't work. Wasn't there a visibility problem as well. I mean, aside from the, bit, the fact that it was dark, was there not also a uh, bit of mist or something as well? Well, nobody really knows, I'm afraid, mm. because, you know, the, the crash report can only be written after the event and all that kind of stuff. You know, right. there's no actually witnesses because, sadly, everybody on board died. But the, the, what Pat told me was, he said that that chap that night was not the most experienced helicopter pilot. There's nothing wrong with him, mm. but under any other circumstances, sometimes a helicopter pilot has to say to their passenger... Look, I'm sorry, but I'm not confident about the conditions in which you've got to fly back. Yeah. Whatever those conditions might yeah. be. Right. Darkness, as you quite rightly mm. say, mist, too much cloud cover, yeah. maybe torrential rain or something like that. Mm. And and this chap apparently had not long been with the company and did not volunteer that he was in any way uh, hesitant about right. the conditions. Okay. Got into the helicopter, flew it. The helicopter on the way back um, came down in a copse. And it, uh, according did it, to the, did it hit a pylon or something? No, according to the report, it simply got wrong the division between the land and the and the sky uh -huh. because it was dark and there's no natural sort of larry, uh, sorry, a light difference between uh, the two. And um, and according to the crash report, the helicopter came down, skidded in a field yeah. on the you know on the skids mm. that the helicopter has to land on. And literally then went like a sleigh straight into a copse of wood right. and was smashed to pieces in trees and mm -hmm. uh, and the resulting tragedy that ensued. Yes. Terrible business. Was that the story you were going to tell me? That was the story I was going oh, to tell okay. you, yeah. Because yeah. right. yeah. i got one here from Anthony. Mm. He says, a 350 mile per hour helicopter, mm. what was Porky flying? Airwolf. <laughs> yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> no, I will accept it wasn't going that fast. I mean, I, look, Well, surely if you flew a helicopter, yes. I mean, that would be one of the highlights of anybody's life. Yes, it would I would be, have yeah. thought. Yeah. You can't remember what what speed you were going. Well, you at. can't. I mean, look what at... altitude were you at? Uh, altitude, I would say about. I mean, were you looking at the uh, instruments at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I'd say it was about a thousand feet. A thousand feet. Yeah, yeah. Literally, yeah. And did you uh, literally? Yes. What you mean, actually? Actually, actually, yeah, yeah. Uh, and in fact, I tell you what happened. As we, I mean, were you instructed, for example, not to go below a certain level? 
Well, no, because all I did was literally hold... I keep saying literally, I'm sorry about this. Yeah, because people, people have pointed, pointed out that this I keep out saying that you keep yeah. saying it without realising yeah. that you keep saying it. Yeah, in fact, it's, I said something... It's literally ridiculous. I said something um, with the word literally in it the other night, mm. and, and it was ridiculous because it's... Uh, oh, yeah, I know what I said. I said... Um, uh, yes, I said squash bores me to death. Literally, it literally bores yeah, me to death. Right. But as I'm Which still here, doesn't. as I'm still after watching squash and I'm still alive, that was an inaccurate uh, use of the grammatical English language. Yeah. So no, what I was going to say was I, I was just flying it on a on a uh, constant um, sort of level. You see what I mean? Yeah. But did he not say to you, whatever you do, don't go below a certain level? Well, no, because it was only flying at one level. I didn't take it up or take it down. Oh, yeah, but the what joystick to... controls the height, doesn't it? it? Uh, yes, but, but what he said was... Yeah, but he just said, hold it steady like that, and right. it just shakes a bit and all that. But the reason... I'm very concerned about the fact no, no. that this is the way that they teach people how to fly. The reason you do that is because you have to be immediately given a test to see whether your nerve hmm. will uh, stand you um, solo flying the helicopter. All right. That's what they have and to do first. what about steering the thing? Well, you do all that on the same... Th- you do that with, uh, like, uh, foot pedals? Foot pedals? Yeah. So, what, you press one foot pedal to go right and one to go left? Yes, basically, yeah, because that and controls so the rudder you, at the back. Did you do any of that? Yeah, I did a bit of that, yeah. So you go from side to side? No, we, we were sort of turning... You know, turning? Yeah, and then... And then uh, sort, sort of, of turning? Back. Yes, that's right, Are yeah. you sure you did any of this? Yeah, of course I did. Oh, it doesn't sound like But it. I did it to the immediate instruction of the instructor sitting next to me, you know, who said, do that, do that, do that. So do I, this. Was, yeah, I was really quite robotic, <laughs> you know, in what I was doing, you know? How about this from mm. William? Another entry for Porky's resume. Yeah. Helicopter pilot. Yeah, that's Porky right, yeah. Biggles. Yeah. Andy in the Peak says, God's mm. buttocks, Porky in a copter. I can see the opening of Apocalypse Now. A whip of the <laughs> blades right, yeah. followed by, well, this is the end. Well, the funny My thing is, do, do you know what? Friend. Do you know what? You've, funny you should say that. When we came back down into Rygate Heliport, yeah. we got down. Rygate Heliport. Yeah, that's true. And then we had to hover um, for a, a, a couple of minutes. And I said, what are you doing, Pat? He yeah. said, there's no space. He said, there's a lot of instructors out on a Sunday morning. It was a Sunday morning. Well, it's not and, exactly Heathrow, is it? Uh, well, it was like Heathrow. It was like the Heathrow of Helicopter World. Yeah. And uh, and he said, I'm just waiting for somebody to leave. Anyway, a helicopter takes off. Pat then says, oh, we'll have to go in from the other side. He then uh, banks the helicopter, right. you know, to the side, and he goes right round the edge of the field and comes back in. And I'm going, uh, uh, you know, because I'm worried that the rotors are going to hit the you ground. Have you had a drink at any of this point? No, no, you no. You no, had a flask drink. with you? No, no, you? nothing like that. You sure? And I, and I said, what that, what's that manoeuvre <laughs> called? And he said, it's called the Vietnam Roll. Really? And, and I said, why? He said it was developed in Vietnam right. by the helicopter pilots there to avoid, if you see what I mean, direct gunfire into the cockpit Getting and all that kind of at, stuff. Yeah. Yeah, How about this from yeah. Robbie? He says, Porky, you need a medical class two certificate to fly and learn to fly a helicopter. Is that right? I yeah. didn't know that. Well, that, nobody said that to me in those days. And in fact, I didn't have to produce a medical certificate or anything like that. So that must just be a as, new invention. Just as well. Mm. Well, I mean, it sounds like a fascinating I mean, afternoon. Yeah. You see, if I'd been given the opportunity to fly a helicopter... Yeah. Um, even if it was only for five minutes, I would have remembered all every single aspect. Well, of I it. do. What don't I remember? Well, you don't know what speed you were going at. You don't know what height you were going. Well, at. listen, uh, listen. Okay, uh, have you flown in uh, small private planes? Yeah. Right. How fast do they go? How fast do they go? Yeah. Well, they go about the same speed. It depends on the plane. If it's a prop well, that's plane, that's exactly what I'm saying. Well, so you don't you don't log these well, things no, necessarily. No, but if I'm a passenger, I'm not looking at the instrument panel, mm. right? Yeah. That's like saying, you know, when you were driving somebody else's car, yes. how fast was it going? If you're driving it, you know. Yes. Okay. Yes. If I'm taking off in a, a Piper Cherokee, yeah. it takes off at probably around about 150 miles an hour because it's not a jet plane. Mm, it's that's a true. Jet prop. If you're taking off in a jet, in it, a tends to, it tends to go at about 200, 220. Yeah, I agree. You know, I mean, but I'm not driving it. Yes. Yeah. If you're in charge of a helicopter, you should know what height you're at because yeah. he should tell you yeah. and he should tell you exactly what speed you're doing. Yeah, but when you're on a train, you don't suddenly think to yourself, oh, I wonder how fast no, this train is going. Driving it, it just though. goes. But you're driving a helicopter. Yeah, well, you know, piloting it's called, it sounds, actually. It sounds incredibly dangerous. Well, the fact that he let some bum yeah. at the hands of a control uh, set of, uh, of, of very dangerous and, and advanced controls yes. without actually making him understand has, what it was about. It has definitely Find whetted that... my appetite to resume helicopter lessons well, and get myself was a helicopter anyway? licence. Oh, it was a few years back now. Well, how many years? Well, I don't know, about six, seven, something like that. Six or seven? Yeah, yeah. More so. than that, sure. No, well, it could have been. could have been ten. could have been ten, I suppose. You know, who knows? Well, this was when you were running talks mm. more, right? Uh, no, I wasn't, no, no. Right. But, uh, oh, here, look, somebody sent me a picture of... Uh, oh, this is very cruel. 
Somebody sent me a picture of Porky's first flight, yeah. and it looks like a true helicopter until it comes to the ground, and it's a toy. By the way, we've had plenty of those <laughs> in the, the, time, by the, way. In the uh, Parry family household over the years. What? The toy helicopters in the kitchen, Why? which you, you fly by remote control. Yeah, the kids' toys. Yeah, that's right, they are. Yeah, well, but why have you got them? Well, because, you know, everybody likes playing around with helicopters in the kitchen when you're making the Christmas lunch. Don't you? I have a... No, oh, actually. Yeah. No, well, I you've mean, got two this, boys. Why have you never bought them a helicopter to play? I, I bought them a helicopter. No, you didn't. You I, bought them that balsa wood plane. No, I didn't. In, you did. You bought a balsa wood plane. And one of your lads... I did bring a helicopter. No, you forgot when so. I came to your house. I definitely did. No. Yeah, search so. your memory. You did. No, I did because it crashed it. a couple of times and they had to uh, yeah. fix the rotors. Yeah, well, I've got, now got this impression of the yeah. family, of uh, Parry family yeah. Christmas with yeah. all these drunken maniacs <laughs> flying <laughs> helicopters into <laughs> each other. Yeah, well. Bizarre scene. Anyway, uh, we've got like more that. to come. Indeed. This is Talk Sport. Crazy. But that's how it goes. of people living as hoes and yeah but maybe it's not too late to talk sport we are the two mics porky quiz time later on it's going to be live on facebook of course so uh, keep your eyes on that and we'll do a link on uh, twitter of course as well sandra mm-hmm. lee's going to join us very shortly good but i've got a story for you right oh, today because yes. i was terrified not terrified but horrified to see uh, the Mount footage Etna. from Mount Etna. I saw it. It's in all the papers this morning as well. Yeah. Um, there's a BBC crew, some of whom were quite badly injured. Very, very close to it, didn't Right they? up at the top. That's and what, right. The reason I'm going to uh, tell you about it is because, as you yeah. know, we went to uh, Sicily over in, uh, in October. Certainly did. And lived uh, yeah. in this place that was sort of in the shadow of yep. Etna. Yep. And I told you about how in the garden they had all these, um, uh, and a load of ash from one of the last eruptions. That's right, Which yeah. had come all over the house. Yeah, yeah. But there's a great picture of me, which mm. I'm going to put out now on Twitter. Why is it a great picture? Because it's me standing, uh, basically, Basically, right near the top of Etna. What, while it's erupting? Well, mean? it wasn't erupting, but you can see smoke coming out of well, it, right? Hang on, what's great about it if it's not erupting? Uh, well, it's great because... It's just a picture it, of you it, on a, it's, it some shows, sort of hill. Could be any hill anywhere in the world. Well, it's not just that. It shows me at the top of a, of a place, which mm. is, uh, you know, an incredibly um, you know, incredibly dangerous place to be. Yeah. Because these things, that when they do erupt, and people forget... Yeah, but hang on, hang on, hang on. You're is. trying to make out that you, were, you know, gritted your teeth and walked up yeah. Etna in the, face, in the face of molten lava. You'll see it. Look, you can see it smoking behind. Look. You can see it smoking behind me. Right, I'll just describe right. this. I'll paint pictures with words, right, and then, okay? Well, I can tweet it out so, as well, by so the way. So you appear to be standing on a sort of uh, gravel car park, right? It's not a gravel car park. Uh, that is the ash which, around, which right. surrounds the summit of Etna. About six miles, I would say, from uh, Etna itself. Not at all. Uh, you say there is smoke coming out the top of Etna. Yes. I say it looks like a low cloud settling on the top of Etna. That's why exactly you, why, what it looks why like. Why are you so mealy-mouthed and incapable of no, accepting that no. I've actually done it? You're trying to make out you've made this dangerous mission up Etna. I'm telling you. Well, how do you think I got up there? It's co- Well, it's complete. Well, you've probably climbed up there, but no, you, weren't, no, you weren't climbing not, over no. molten lava. I did not climb this up is, there, this is not you a, complete plank. This I took is, a ca- there's a cable car which takes you all the way to the top, right? Well, yeah. There is then a further bus that takes you to the very, very uh, uh, dangerous summit park. So, as where, I said, you're in a car park, people, yeah. No, I'm not in a car park. It looks like you're in a car well, park. that's because you don't understand the nature of volcanic ash. All around that picture is volcanic ash, okay? Is it really? That's yeah. what it is. It's yeah. black. Could be anything, mate. Could be anything. I don't know why I bother showing you anything, which is well, a very interesting. Well, all I'm trying to Let's say Let's go back is... to your fantasy stories no. about flying a helicopter, shall we? No, no, here we are. There's no po- no photographs of you flying a helicopter, but we here spent are. 20 minutes talking about it. Here we I are. show you a photograph of me on Etna, and you immediately you're not on it. Etna. You're not on I'm Etna. I'm standing at the top of Etna, you, you plank. You're standing on the foothills of Etna you've at never, best. Never, you've never even been there, have you? You're standing on the foothills you've of Etna You've never been best. there. There's a few bits of rubble around, but there's no sign of red-hot molten lava. What do you think the smoke is? It's a, a, to me, it doesn't look like smoke. It looks right. like low cloud. Well, of course you like are a size, seismology expert. Aren't and you? Uh, the other thing I would say is that you look so frightened about you know being suddenly burnt by lava. You've got a pair of white shorts on. You've got a, a you know like a, a pasty blue sort of uh, t-shirt. And uh, a, a, it's jumper. a polo shirt, actually. Polo shirt. And I'm so frightened that I've got a jumper sort of draped uh, over my shoulders. Yeah, right. yeah exactly. So, yeah. so all I'm saying is, how, how, how can you possibly pass this off to our millions of listeners as, yeah. you know, the terrifying trip up Etna? I'm not saying it's terrifying. I'm not saying it's terrifying. I'm just saying, isn't it interesting that I was there not very long ago? I'm sorry you're not interested mm. in it because you're not in the picture, but yes. I will send the picture out mm. uh, and the people who have been to Etna will understand how high up I actually am. Yes. If I, I'll tell you how high up it was. Mm. The air was considerably thinner than it was at the base of the mountain. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Who told you I mean, that? 
Well, I could tell by the way I was breathing. <laughs> but because you walked up about four hundred yards. No, I hadn't. I took a. You, were... no, I said, you don't listen to a word I'm saying. No, I took a cable car up there. Well, okay? I tell you what, just getting out the cable cars mm. really puffed you out because you yeah. you okay. carry such a gross right. amount of weight okay. in your Let's on your own frame. Let's go back to some more tales from Porky's <laughs> fantasy world, then, shall we? Let's tell. Let's talk about the time you drove a submarine, shall we? Shall we do that? <laughs> no, I've never Let's driven do a that. submarine. You've never driven a submarine. No, I've never oh, how a submarine. surprising! No. Well, I will tell you what, for all the people no, who have actually been in a submarine, who actually got a brain, I could go in a submarine. For all the people who have got a brain and a discerning capability of their own I shall send out this picture of Good. me up Etna, Good. where I went on a family holiday yeah. uh, which was very enjoyable not yeah. only because it was a lovely part of the world yes. but because I was away from you for another bloody week oh dear me you're getting really uh, getting really hat up now aren't you um, look I'm That's glad you enjoyed your holiday up. but I, I just don't think that you should wind up the audience and tell them oh my brave mission up Etna I didn't say it was not brave brave about it it wasn't I even erupting say, I didn't say it was brave yeah you did you said no. it was a terrifying mission I didn't say it was terrifying yeah yeah when yeah. did I say that you did you said that I just said it so happens that there are stories in the mm. papers this morning because there is uh, some footage taken by BBC crew yes. of the uh, moment when Etna actually erupted very close to yes, them and yes. it's a very frightening experience I'm sure to be caught up in wouldn't I was you... not caught up in a frightening experience mm. however Sorry, it's an interesting wouldn't, picture wouldn't that be the same quite seriously now right just look at the logic of what, I, uh, of what I'm going to tell you uh-huh. wouldn't it be the same as you suddenly coming in on Monday and saying oh look at this I say, oh what's that Mike and there's a picture of you in a field and yeah. you say you won't believe this, but uh, that was the scene of the Battle of Hastings in 1066. Uh, wasn't I brave to uh, go on to the battlefield of Hastings in 1066? And I would say, but there is no battle taking place, Mike. It's not like you're going to get an arrow in the eye. It's not like you're getting trampled by war horses. Mm. Nothing's yeah. happening there. Mm. That's exactly the same as your picture on me bravely, you know, well, you scaling see, well, again, the, the you're slopes projecting, of Etna. You're projecting your own ridiculously fantastical personality oh. onto one of my stories. I no. never said I was brave. I never yeah. said uh, that it was dangerous. I think you did. What I said I was. Think you did, well, honestly. Well, I don't want to well, have if, a go well, at you, but I think well, you did. People want to want to want to ask me whether I yeah. said that, uh, whether they remember whether I said that. Yes. That's one thing, but yes. I certainly am not mm. in the business of exaggerating every story no. that I tell. No. All I'm saying is, is that given that it's in the news, mm. it's quite an interesting picture, and I'm going to put it out. Yeah, and I, I'm I like sorry that you should. don't like that you're not in it. And no. I'm sorry that you don't like that we're talking about something which doesn't involve no, you. No, I and want I'm you to sorry that out. you're now rubbishing something else which I, I've done with my family. I'm not rubbish. If you want to be that kind of a guy, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Just fine. I'm not trying to rubbish. Absolutely no problem. I'm just putting it into perspective, that's Are all. You? And that's yeah. my job, okay. isn't it? You know, as let's a, hear some more let's hear some a, more of your stories. As a, okay? as a communicator. By the way, you can go in a submarine, you know, just around the corner from where I live. Really? Because just around the corner from where I live, down in Gosport, mm. is Britain's only submarine museum. Really? And you go on board a proper real submarine. Right, have which you done is... that? Why haven't you done that? Well, I haven't had time. And uh, you haven't had time? Well, I haven't had time, have I? How long have you lived down there? Uh, ten years. And you haven't had time in no, ten years no, to go on the submarine? No, I haven't, no, no. Why? Hey. You've got time to go out to all the various local hostelries every time you're there. Well, that's usually for meetings with the local people. I like meetings. to. Meetings. I like to. I think if you live somewhere, my belief is always if you live somewhere, immerse yourself in the local community. Is you that know right? what I mean? Yeah. 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 Well, you're only there about three times a year. Uh, well, that's not quite true, but I mean, you're absolutely right. I do well, have How many times have you been there time. this year? Uh, I can't count because um, the. Uh, I, well, I mean, I can count, but you I mean, can't I can't count. I, I think there's never I a truer word spoken. I can't remember the number of times I've been yeah. there this year because I don't, I don't. I mean, if I said to you, how, well, many, it's not times, difficult, is it? how many times you've been down to see your family this year, you wouldn't know. I would know exactly how no, many would. times. No, you yes, I would. No, I've been, I've been there every weekend, for example, mm. aside from the one weekend where yes. uh, I actually went to the to America. But even then, I was there on Friday. Yes. So I've actually been there, I would say, every single week of this year. Yeah, OK, well, I mean, you know that, because that's a regular pattern. I don't have such a regular pattern, right. because my, you, my you life do... is not is not compartmentalised as, as neatly as yours is, because I have a lot more things to do. You have a lot more things yeah, to do yeah. than I do. Mm. Is that mm. right? Yeah, I okay. do, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah, absolutely. yeah. but also your memory isn't quite what it was, is it? My memory is everything, mate. It's just that, you know, I can't keep a log of everything I do, yeah. otherwise I'd spend all day filling in a diary, yeah. wouldn't I? Do you remember the last time you signed an autograph for somebody? Last time I signed an autograph mm. for somebody? Yeah. I signed a couple of books yesterday. Did you? Yeah. Where? Um, at our distributors. Did you? Yes, because yeah. they were sending them off me. By well, the way, sorry. More in terms of in, po- in person. Uh, can I just say, by the way, I'm awfully sorry that some books have taken a long time to get back to you. Uh, two copies of Rooney Tunes were sent to me. I'm sorry that they, they got stuck in the system somewhere. They've been signed to the people who sent them and dispatched back to you. I hope you've got them. And also the DVD that should have reached one of our great loyal followers on the 14th of this month for their birthday. Sadly, is missed by a couple of days. Again, got stuck in the system, but I've sent a letter of apology along with the DVD. Thank you. Uh, sorry, why are you asking me this question? I'm just wondering how good your memory is. Uh, what do you mean? 
Well, what? excuse me, I'm just sending out a picture. I'll have to get back to this because we haven't got any time now. Right. I'm asking you whether you remember signing an autograph recently for somebody. I signed 10, uh, 11 actually, yesterday because... I'm not talking about at your distribution centre. No, no, this, this was not at my distribution centre. This was at a hostelry who had acquired a card of Porky Scratchings. Oh, right. How did they acquire it? Uh, you gave it to them. No, 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 no. They got it themselves. Um, Where did they get it from? From the distribution centre. They'd ordered it and it had arrived. Oh, I see. So I was asked to go along. Well, I did. I signed each individual packet, uh-huh. Porky, and I signed the card, you know, very best wishes to all concerned. Oh, I so what, you, threw, you, you signed it for people that were buying them? No, what's happening is they're now going to go up in the bar of the uh, public house, which is called The Well, so, so when somebody goes in to buy one of these packets, yeah. they can buy it signed by yes, you? Yes, they can, yeah. yeah, yeah. What are you laughing <laughs> That's for? That's pathetic. No, it's not, because you haven't heard the full story. I can't. I haven't got time for the full story. Well, it's a very, time. It's a very good story, and you're, and you're going to really uh, regret having said that, I'm afraid. Well, I don't mind hearing it. I'll hear it later. Uh, OK, yeah. Well, I mean, we you're going to regret it. I, I know that you don't like to... You've, uh, you've, you've created a terrible faux pas for yourself, Well, how's that? Well, because you have. Why? Well, because I did it for... A children's charity. So, and every, well, you haven't sold anything yet. Every packet that is sold, yeah. the money from those mm. will go to a children's charity. What you mean, all money. the money? All the money. What you mean, apart from the money that goes to the company? No, no, all the money. Oh, will so go. the company's giving all that up, are they? Absolutely. Really? Well, Absolutely. we might have to hold you to that. Yeah. This is Talk Sport coming up in a little while. It's time for the Porky Quiz. It's going to be on Shakespeare uh, because, of course, uh, mm. the new Leicester manager has had rather a successful yep. uh, first opening period. Right now, though, uh, before we get to any of that, we're going to talk to Sandra Lee, our favourite Australian, uh, who is down under in Sydney. Sandra, a very good morning to you. Welcome. Good morning to you, chaps. And should I be calling Porky Prince Andrew? Uh, well, I mean, what? you know, because he flies... Well, he's wondering... He's, even he's forgotten what the link is there. Hey. Because uh, he's claiming that he knows how to fly a helicopter. But, I mean, I'll tell you what, if you were stupid enough to get into anything with him other than even a car, uh-huh. uh, you know, you wouldn't last very long. Well, i tell you what, Sandra, flying a helicopter with me would be safer than being in the back of a yellow cab hurtling down 3rd uh, Avenue in Manhattan like we used to, bladderated in drink. <laughs> I'm not sure that was ever me being bladderated. Oh, I, I'm pretty, I'm pretty damn sure yeah. it was. Talking about his, his memory is not really what it was. You see, you'll have very different uh, a memory of your encounters with Porky. Excuse you? me, excuse me, <laughs> nothing nefarious. Um, anyway, Sandra, great to have you on the show again. Thank you very much. We, Mike and I, were only discussing last week about some case which has become pretty highly publicised in Australia, in which backpackers, uh, British ones uh, as well, get themselves into a bit of trouble because they go to these incredible raids that apparently take place, you know, on the beaches uh, of Australia at this time of the year. And people, young people from all over the world turn up and often they become, you know, public order problems, but putting people in danger as well. Yes, there are. I I think drugs and alcohol have a lot to do with that. They're Mm. taking, um, you know, the wrong type of um, medication, not medication, it's illegal drugs. They're getting into trouble. They go swimming. They, you know, some of them have been getting into trouble in the water. Mm. Others have been hooking hooking up with the wrong people. And um, we've just had this horrendous case that's come to light last um, Sunday, just gone, of a young British backpacker who had um, met a young boy, a young Australian man at an Australian Day party this year. So only in January, she's gone on a bit of um, a holiday with him and it turns out that it's been two months of absolute nightmare. She's been repeatedly raped Mm. and assaulted. It's just the most terrifying ordeal that you could imagine. Mm. And um, thankfully she was was discovered by police and um, she's now safe, but... um, goodness knows how she's going to recover from that ordeal. Mm. And is there a sort of... I mean, has it become something... Because, you know, over here we get for a while... Yeah. Um, you know, Raves. Rave, but there's, there's a certain type of rave that everybody goes to for a while, then it kind of dies out. And These illegal ones in country yeah, estates yeah. and all and that. And that's, that doesn't happen really so much anymore. No. So is this like a fad, do you think, Sandra, or is it something that's been going on for a while? No, I think it's more of a fad. I think it's exactly what's going on over there. You know, somebody gets an idea, a hot idea, and they put it up on social media, on Facebook, and um, then all of a sudden you've got everybody right. turning up, mm. and um, and then it sort of gets out of hand, and, and therein lies your problem. Yeah, I mean, there was yeah. one in Newcastle the other day, funnily enough, I don't know if you it? saw this, where yeah. the crowd were all sort of giving, or the people who were going were giving instructions how to get there, yeah, that's right. uh, which involved going under the streets, and they all had to walk through a sort of um, underground lake, practically, which is like two feet with water, Yeah, and they started getting panicky and calling well, the police. I mean, it's all a bit dodgy. It's, it's it? all the social networking thing, isn't it? But the, the thing is, um, Sam, as I'm sure you're aware, Australia is a huge magnet for uh, young kids who go on these gap years. Now, 
I am totally against gap years. I believe, like you do, I'm sure, because you have my strong work ethic, that as soon as you what leave... What are you talking about now? Excuse me. As soon as you leave school, you should go and earn yourself a living. For some unknown reason, parents let their kids, when they're 18 and 19, go drifting off around the world. Australia is a huge magnet for them because they, you know, they love the idea of uh, the beach-style life. And so these sort of problems must crop up all the time. We have so many international tourists, young young kids doing that gap year, and a yep. lot of them do it not only for one year, but they do it for two years. Right. So they're here, um, and, and they and they do. You know, they provide a lot of the workforce actually for our harvesting for summer crops and winter crops. But right. that's about it, um, because they're only allowed to work for a certain amount of time, yeah. and they're not allowed to earn more than twenty thousand dollars. But they do cause an enormous amount of problems. Mm, they do. Do they still get on to the uh, sheep shearing stations? Because that's uh, that's a great image, isn't it? Somebody turning up and suddenly getting onto a sheep shearing station somewhere in the outback and uh, getting sheep a pa- shearing station. Yeah, getting a Have pair. You of, a go at that? No, no, getting a pair of electric shears and start shearing sheep. I suppose that still goes on, does it? Yeah, not not as much. I think the only time that they get anywhere um, anywhere uh, on a sheep farm these days is uh, to be the cook or oh, the cleaner. So remember, really? old Prince William famously did it, didn't he? Did he? he was, I don't remember if it was in Australia or New Zealand, but no, when no. they were down under, anyway, yeah. he, he was filmed sort of trying to uh, because they try and do it as fast as possible, don't they? To shear. Oh, that's right. Sheep. Yeah. Well, they they have sheep shearing uh, like competitions, yeah. don't they? You know, these guys, uh, you know, tie your kangaroo down. Uh, boy and all that kind of stuff, but um, no, uh, and, all, and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's right. Whatever yeah. that means. Yeah, yeah. But Sandra, <laughs> getting... listen, I want to ask you about the spider. Yeah, yeah, not... exactly. Is the spider yeah. still in the house, or have you got rid of it? Well, I don't know if it's still in the house, but I haven't seen it for the last three nights. So mm. it's gone a wall. So it could be still here. It used... What it was doing, it was be out feeding for a night, and then it would get huge, even mm. bigger and bigger, mm. and then it would disappear for twenty four hours, and then right. it would come back. So. I'm not sure if it's actually disappeared altogether mm. or if it's, um, you know, moved out and taken up better lodgings elsewhere. Oh, I see. Well, you mean might, might sort of um, uh, sort of trade it up? As, as might it be were. creeping around. Spiders are okay. They're harmless. <laughs> Get, getting They're back... not all harmless. Some of them are actually deadly. Well, I, I agree with that, except for the deadly ones, yeah. yeah. Now, getting back to uh, <laughs> just... Uh, just what a plank. Excuse me. Just to believe this. Excuse me. Just getting back to an issue I raised with you a few seconds ago, Sandra, on the work ethic. Yeah. You and I, of course, brought up in the same work ethic. I think you were a cadet um, reporter, weren't you, in your start of your career? And uh, I was a trainee journalist. But in this country these yeah. days, the when, work, are you, when are you going to qualify? The, the, the work ethic has, has all but disappeared because of the liberalisation of the whole of society. Is that the same in Australia? Do young people in Australia still want to, you What's... know, make their names and their fortunes by working hard? Well, I think there are some people who do, but I think there's a real sense of entitlement along a lot of young kids. Um, right. They get out of university and they think that they can go straight into a you know a ninety thousand dollar job straight away yes, without right. having to do any of the hard, without doing the hard yards. Yeah, and um, you're right. There's there's there was a report out this week in Australia mm-hmm. actually that in um, the last. Uh, the last two years in New South Wales, which is where I live, yeah. that the number of apprentices taking up apprenticeships, which is, you know, sort of doing your three-year trade and yeah. all your training, yeah. Yeah. has dropped by 50%. So we have fewer, 50% fewer new um, sparkies, electricians, yeah. um, chippies be, being builders. Yeah. We are, we, we're we're going to have a massive problem in the years to come. You see, that is uh, that is dreadful. And do, do you know same, what? Same situation here. It, of course it is. In mm. this country, we used to have universities running alongside technical colleges and the technical colleges taught people how to be plumbers and bricklayers and that yeah. sort of thing. That's Polite- all but gone. Polite- technics they had yeah, as well, didn't yeah, it's they? All but gone. Yeah. It's all but gone. Is that the same yeah. in, in your country? It's absolutely the same and what they're doing is they're trying to shove through a whole pile of um, young students into university who really don't have the desire or the aptitude yeah. or the um, the now to do it and yeah. it's just ridiculous. It's creating you know, a whole pile of graduates who've got no jobs to go to and no real qualifications. Well, I'll no, tell you what, interesting. We were talking, here. Uh, we were yeah. talking uh, to a correspondent over in the White House uh, quite recently, mm. just about an hour or so ago, about Donald Trump. And, I mean, I was seeing that one of uh, former, one of the first ambassadors to China for Australia, Stephen Fitzgerald, was talking about this the other day, that actually, a bit like that badge we used to see in New York, you know, it's Frank's world, we all live in it. It's actually China's world yeah. and we all live in it now. So, um, you know, is it time that Australia is going to look or other countries are going to look at having more of an important relationship with China than, say, with America and the rest of Europe? Well, I think that Australia has a pretty important relationship with China already, but I don't think anyone would argue that our relationship, our primary relationship will 
for a very long time to come not be with America. It's just, um, it's the superpower. Even though we have huge trade links and huge diplomatic ties with China, mm. uh, America is still going to be number one. Oh. And that report, that chap who you were talking about is a, is a lifelong Sinophile. Right. And, um, and he tends to be from the left of, um, you know, uh, political sure. spectrum, which is where they all are. Yeah, no, I, that's right. Uh, we'll put America down, all that kind of stuff. Just, um, just finally, Sandra, I've got you on. I've got a report in front of me. 85% of the Great Barrier Reef Coral is being badly damaged by warming seas. Uh, you know, it's it's like a natural um, uh, happening. Uh, is this something you're aware of? Yes, it is. In fact, it's. Um, so we've talked about this before too. Yeah. Last year there was a problem with the bleaching of the coral, and the same thing has happened again this summer with yeah. the um, sort of the slight percentage increase in sea temperature. But it happened. It's been happening um, since year dot. It mm. it comes and goes. You know, right. it recovers. Yeah. It gets bleached. It recovers. It goes goes along fabulously for twenty or thirty years, and then you know mm. you have the same cycle. Sure. Sure. And, and, and just finally, Sandra... Well, then we need to get an update on the kangaroo attacks. Though. Well, the kangaroo attack in a minute, but I, 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 I've got <laughs> you something... You just said one finally already. No, no, it's no, the second finally. No, but Sandra will be interested in this. You remember mm. the uh, mutiny on the bounty, obviously, you know, a great uh, happening historically. You know that we a new report suggested it wasn't actually uh, Captain Bly, the guy who was, uh, who was cast away in the boat, who was mad. It was Fletcher Christian, who was a nutter and uh, completely mad, and that Captain Bly was one of the greatest sailors ever because... In in that little rowing boat into which he was put, he managed to navigate his way through the Great Barrier Reef without any charts or anything, just looking at the sun. This man was a genius. Is that recognised in Australia? Uh, yes, I think it is. I, th- I think that um, there's two sides. Hold the front story, page, one, right? It's a story from uh, 200 years ago. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, I'm I'm, I'm, oh, he did. <laughs> he, he did. I mean, you, we well, all know the story. We all know the story of the mutiny on the bounty, don't we? And and the well, fact- apparently not, because apparently everything is not as it would seem. You know? <laughs> yeah, but now, now you've interrupted Sandra. Sandra was telling me Blimey. how in in a, in how high esteem is that man held in Australia. Oh, I, I, look, I don't know very much about it, but I would what? say um, in some, in some <laughs> esteem. Yeah, in some yeah. esteem. Yeah, let's wait until, cop out. wait until there's another movie made. You know, <laughs> yeah. Maybe you could play Fletcher Christian, yeah, well, the nutter. Well, yeah, he was a nutter. He yeah. was a madman. Captain Bly was a good guy. OK, Sandra, yeah. thank you very much indeed, as ever. I'm terribly sorry that the, yeah. uh, the conversation seemed to sort of uh, ratchet off into what? some bizarre direction no. with Porky's imagination. Have a lovely all. time and give our regards to the spider. Yeah. Sandra Lee there uh, reporting in for from uh, New South Wales, mm-hmm. uh, Sydney, of course, to be precise. Mm. Um, here's one from Steve. Uh, uh, he, he says this. Uh, yeah. Great shows. Oh, hang on, sorry, this is from Chris. Great mm. shows always, guys. Mm. Could you give my little boy, Ronnie, who was born yesterday, a shout-out? So, wow. born yesterday. Wow. Newest young listener to the show. One day old Ronnie. Ronnie, Ronnie, congratulations on coming into this world. We'll try and make it good for you, and you have a long and productive life. Thank you very don't, much indeed. Don't take the path in life that MG's taken, yeah, otherwise you'll turn out a wrong one. Ronnie's a great name for a baby, isn't it? Is, it? Isn't it? Yeah. Let's talk sport. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. Got some great tweets coming in. One from mm-hmm. Jacob who says, yep. Spiders are harmless except for the deadly ones. Move over David Attenborough. Oh, Mike no. Perry is here. Come on. Everybody That's knows exactly good. what I meant there. Uh, you know? Somebody else, uh, Campalot, says that you do bear quite mm. a resemblance to the captain of the Titanic. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what reference that is to, presumably when you drove a cruise ship captain somewhere. Captain of the Titanic. I never drove a cruise ship. Did Been you? on a few cruise ships. Been okay. on the... Uh, been on the Queen uh, Elizabeth II, really? probably the most famous cruise ship of all time. Well, yes, it may, yes. maybe it was at one time. Yes. Lots of people are commenting on my picture of Etna. Yeah. Uh, Scottish Bull says, a pity we couldn't throw mm. Porky into Etna. Uh, well, that's and very nice, from, isn't it? Uh, from Jay, who no. says, Porky can't bear it and someone else has something interesting to say. Mm. Absolute plank. The no, 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 no. Trump of talk sport. No, no, you have to... You, you completely misrepresent me. I am a forum for debate. Are you? Uh, I sometimes like to stimulate the debate, get yeah. people involved, but uh, it was great to have Sandra on. Yeah. She is uh, a top uh, conversationalist. Stephen has issued and a warning. And careful, Porky. He says, MG being off the cigs, he yeah. could cave your head in very soon. Very touchy and irritable. Yeah, well, I, 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 you know... I'm well, getting, you're taking no account of that, you see. No, I'm getting... Uh, I'm getting uh, indications of that. Neil yeah. here says, I can fly a helicopter. Spiders are harmless except the deadly ones. Listening to Mike Parr is like listening to a child, but he's brilliant. Two mics. 
Very now, good. we've got another message here mm. from our old friend Richard. Oh, Richard, um, yeah. Uh, Richard and Christine up in Manchester. Oh, right? they're two of our uh, biggest who've fans. They've been to see us a yeah. few times, and we've seen, uh, we saw them in Edinburgh, I think, last. Mm-hmm. Uh, or have we seen them since then? I can't remember. Uh, we saw them in Edinburgh. Were certainly. they in Glasgow? I don't think so. I think no. they were in Glasgow. They were, they were in Liverpool, but I, don't know, I think we missed them. Anyway, right. uh, I've yeah. got a message from Richard because he's got a couple of friends uh, right. who are apparently big uh, fans of our show. Right, good. Um, and one of them is Irish, so given that it's St. Patrick's Day, yes. which we didn't get back to, actually. Ian, o- Ian O'Hagan mm. and his beautiful wife, Shirley, mm-hmm. who are apparently listening to the show. Right. Uh, I think we're brilliant. And uh, he says he would like us to say hello to them. OK. So we're saying hello to them. Hello, yeah. What are the names again? Uh, their names are Ian and uh, Shirley. Ian and Shirley, uh, some mistake. we uh, very much appreciate you uh, being uh, tuned in when we're on the airwaves and uh, have a great day. Yeah. Uh, like Mick say. says this. Ask Porky about the time you took a Formula One car around the streets of Monaco. Uh, I didn't. You didn't, do no, you? No, no, I've never done that, no. That no. sounds like something you might have done. No, I've never claimed to. We were once in Monaco for that famous Chelsea game where Ranieri became the tinker man. You know, he, he changed the team around. I seem to remember uh, the semi-final great Semi-final in the Champions League and... The- uh, Sorry. I was going to say, the last great Monaco story was uh, the last Monaco Grand Prix when uh, Mr. Brazil went down there and, and didn't manage to miss the race, even though <laughs> yeah, he was yeah. on a boat, which yeah. was literally 10 yards. <laughs> from, from the corner. From, the, from Fr- one of the corners. From the most active corner, yeah. yeah. He didn't know it started. No, he didn't know. He was uh, otherwise engaged mm. in, a, in a cl- an enclosed area. Um, you know, uh, communicating with people, obviously, over a couple of drinks, probably. Absolutely. Uh, which is his want. Well, um, that's why they invite him there. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they don't invite him there to give him a commentary on no, the they race, don't. do they? No, they invite him there to uh, entertain, uh, you know, his natural entertainment factor with other people. Um, what I was going to say was, we were there for the game and they were setting up the... They were turning Monaco into the Grand Prix track, if you see what I mean. Yes. And, and, and it's, it's absolutely fascinating because they have to... Resurface a lot of the roads for I obvious reasons. Would, yeah. You know, yeah. uh, when you think about it, you think about the, the speed at which a, a Grand Prix car goes. It could hit a pebble mm. and it would dislodge a wheel or something right. like that. So it's incredible. The they care must they actually take. spend an awful lot of time just because re- they must resurface it before the race yeah, and they, then resurface it again afterwards. I'm not sure if they resurface it afterwards, but what they do is when they resurface a bit at a time, but then they have to keep the traffic off it to make sure it doesn't get you know uh, altered in any way or or damaged it again. But it's. Yeah. Uh, it's it's an incredible place, Monaco, but I wouldn't want to live there because it's... You know, a lot of these racing drivers live there and a lot of top stars live well, there. Well, a lot of people live there because of the rather but, favourable tax regime. They certainly do. But, my God, to talk about, you know, being uh, enclosed in a village, I mean, you know, the wealthiest village in yeah, the world. But, right. I mean, at every turn, you are... What's the word I'm looking for? Well... It, the, the small streets with huge blocks of mm. uh, buildings right. and ancient buildings and all that. I mean, it, it is literally like living in a toy town. And it's most, it most yeah. be mostly very difficult to find a parking spot. Because I remember going there once um, with yeah. when we were on a sort of little we were, a trip down I there. I can actually, imagine that. Birthday. We, we drove yeah. in and one of the roads was closed. Mm. You know, you come in from, I think we're coming in from, from the west. Nice so coming somewhere. in from the east side. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and actually, it was a... It was a um, a little medieval village because somebody was having a 25th yeah. wedding anniversary down there. In fact, Sir Nicholas Lloyd was in attendance. OK. Uh, St. Paul de Vence, I think, is the name of the village. Yes. But we decided to take a little trip into Monaco. Yeah. And they'd shut the, one of the roads, which meant mm. that there was this massive mm. tailback. Yeah. And, of course, I'd very blithely said to the other half, mm. oh, it'd be great, we'll just pop there for lunch. Right. It was about four hours oh, yeah, to would, get there. Well, yeah, and then we got there. Yeah. And, you know... As you know, apart from where you can mm. see the front, you can't mm. park anywhere near the front. No, you can't. There's no, no room. No, no. And we had to park somewhere around the back of some hotel. Yeah. I mean, it was well, it's not the easiest place to visit. No, it's not. But if you imagine how valuable that area of land is, I mean, how could you possibly give it up to parking yeah, when right. some developer will come along and say, I'll put another sixteen five million dollar flats on that, yeah. uh, you know, apartments on that uh, uh, bit of land. So exactly. I, can, I can perfectly understand that. And in the peaks is now saying, um, mm. have we got any stories from Porky taking the lunar module back in 1969? Yeah. with Neil Armstrong yeah. letting him take the plaudits well I mean you know, it's starting people, to get a bit out of hand now this. people are getting uh, a bit uh, you know a bit overwhelmed by all this uh, now Nico says uh, on my picture of Etna that's a very nice picture actually mm-hmm. MG you should use it as a profile picture yes. uh, by the way Porky's just green with envy and a plank I'm not green with envy at all and uh, all I'm saying is well, you've never is been that... up a volcano have you um, have I been up a volcano let me just think about this I've been to plenty of places are there any you've volcanoes in Chile in, in Chile? Chile and a well, they might in Chile. be. I don't know. You're the one that's been to the there. Andes, isn't it? 
It is the Andes. The Andes. Yeah. So there's probably. Some... I mean, there are certainly volcanoes in South America. Yeah, there's probably some volcanoes there. Uh, maybe, maybe you can in say Turkey. No. You can say no. It's not a maybe problem if you haven't managed to be up a volcano. What's the most famous volcano in history? In history, we mm. Mount Saint Helens probably for blowing up, but that's no, in Washington no, State. No, 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 no. Think uh, more laterally. There Think is. Laterally. Uh, well, Etna's very famous. Etna's famous, but there's Vesuvius. a more famous one. More famous one. Vesuvius is quite famous. No, it's not. No. Most well, famous volcano. Well, if you're asking me a question that you already know the answer to, why yes. don't you just tell me? I'm going to. The most famous... Uh, in fact, I don't even know the name of the most famous volcano That's in how famous it is. Yeah, but... It's, it's so famous you don't know yeah, the name of it. Yeah, but it's the volcano. <laughs> it's the volcano in which James Bond flew his what? gyrocopter into in the film You uh, Only Live you Twice. You Complete Plate. Was it... No, no. You Only Live Twice? I don't know. No, was it You Only Live Twice or... I don't know. And, well, don't you remember? That, no, I don't remember. Because he flew his gyrocopter no. in and there was a lake, but it wasn't a real lake, a it lake. was a false lake. That's not a real volcano, then. Well, it is a volcano, no, because they, they opened the floor of the lake and what happened? A missile came out. Yeah, so it's not a real he volcano. Was, uh, he was trying to blow up the world. It's the, not a real the, volcano, The baddie villain. Is I that the one that you ended up falling down into with the girl? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Absolutely right. I don't think that's you only lived twice. Uh, which one was it, then? I don't know. It was, well, you know, it was, um, you know, the... It's the, Roger Moore, isn't it? No, it's Sean Connery because oh, because the, the famous uh, Doctor No then no 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 that was uh, filmed in the Caribbean this was in Japan uh-huh. so it was in Japan it was it was okay. you only live you Thunderball oh, no Thunderball was at sea okay but the reason they Obviously. found out it wasn't real water was as you quite rightly say yeah. James Bond and the girl well, why tumbled would there be down real water it, into it. it was a volcano. So well, it's not the, a volcano at all. Well, well, they tumbled down. And you haven't uh, been there. And then they hit plastic. So you actually haven't answered anything about the question. I said that's the most famous volcano in history. Right. The James and, Bond volcano. And have without you, a shadow of a doubt. Have you been there? No. <laughs> but I don't want to go there. This is talk sport. This is Talk Sport. We are the Two Mites. We've got loads of tweets to read out. You can uh, see them. Uh, follow us, of course, on Twitter at the Two Mites, at Mike Perrier or at I R O M G. Mm. Uh, we will be filming the uh, Porky Quiz coming up a little bit later on on Facebook Live. If you're not on Facebook, we'll send you a little uh, link so that on, yep. uh, you can watch it on. Yeah, uh, that'll be good. Uh, watch it via the. Uh, uh, the uh, Twitter scenario. Looking as forward well. to that. Looking forward to that. Dr. John says this yes. drove to Marseille and Monaco last summer from Doncaster for the Euros, one of the best road trips ever. Wow. It is a very, very cool trip to yeah. go down that way. It is, to go down that coastline, yeah. you mean? Yeah. It's, William it's... says this the biggest volcano is on Mars. Mm-hmm. Olympus Mons, two and a half times taller than Mount Everest. Really? That's great news. Mm. Except that, you know, it's irrelevant because nobody's ever going to Mars. So, Well, if you go uh, there, just be careful. You know that uh, I read something the other day in one of my scientific journals mm. that within six years, people will be offered like huge amounts of money to go on one-way missions to Mars. One-way missions. Yeah, yeah. I think I heard about this. Yeah, that they won't they won't be coming back, you right. know what I mean? Well, because so, they're going to try and colonize it. Yeah, right? that's right. Yeah, but you, there's well, no way back, idea. you know, you go there and you stay, you know, you you spend the last 20 years of your life there or something well, like that. Have you seen The Martian that film? Uh, no, I'm, I, I've got. A, I bought it. a copy of it. I bought the DVD when okay. I was in a shop, and I saw it. There. I thought somebody told me that's really good. Yeah, uh, that's a Matt Damon, isn't it? Surviving on uh, his own after is. the ship takes off. Yeah. Oh look, we've got a nice picture mm. here from uh, Russell. Oh yes, who sent us in a picture of him with Claudia Ranieri mm. and a bunch of guys in Monaco. Oh really? Look at that. Let's have a look. on the front. Ranieri sort of guy in the middle. Very nice. Mm. That's excellent. Yeah. Now listen, I want to talk to you about something that I picked up in one of my uh, criminology journals. <laughs> 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 Yeah, sorry. But of course, sorry, I couldn't get one that of your out. criminology, criminology journals. journals. Yeah, what's this one called? Well, Crime Weekly. No, 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 no. But this uh, this came from a report in the United States of America. A uh, guy called uh, Reed Montague. <laughs> was, Reed Montague. Yeah, Reed. Yeah, that's honestly. one of those names you can put around uh, either way. Yeah, yeah. Montague Reed. Yeah, no, it's Reed, Reed Montague. But it's R E A D. Reed Montague, okay. professor of psychiatry and behavioural medicine at Virginia Tech Carillion uh, University. Um, now uh, he, uh, you know, it's a very very, very detailed survey and uh, research that they've been going into, OK? Right. But one of the conclusions that I'm drawing from it, right, and I'm not putting words this in the is, mouth of the independ- professor... You're independently drawing this. Yeah, yeah. to do with Reed Montague. No, no, that's not... But I'm, I'm reading and trying to interpret his research and all this kind of stuff. You know, like, for instance, 200 years ago, you could go to jail because you were a debtor. Yes. Right? Debtor's prison, they used to call it. Debtor's prison. Yeah. So 200 years ago... Was it not... Uh, there was a name for the street, because my old man used to talk about this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what, what, what was the name? It was like, you'll end Carey up in... Carey Street, Carey Street. Street. That was Carey it, yeah. Street, that's right, yeah. That's where you went to be back where the debtor's jail was, when yeah. you ended up there. So that was so that was a crime, OK? Yeah. Uh, now, 200 years on, more enlightened society, we realise, well, it actually isn't the debtor's fault. You see what I mean? 
Now, what I think is going to... Well, that's not always true, though, is it? Well, what, uh, I'm, sa- what I'm saying is it, 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 the debtor did not intend criminal intent. It was just that he wasn't a very good businessman or something like that. Yeah, you know what I mean? But you see, I'm, see I'm, I'm, I've always, I used to have interesting conversations mm, about mm. this with um, um, uh, Keith Arthur. Right. He used to come in to do Fisherman's Blues. Yeah, so he was very right, hard yeah. line about this. He was like, you know, why yeah. should... And he mm. used to get upset with these debt reconstruction that's companies right, yeah. where they'd say, look, we will buy all the debt mm. and then we'll pay off your creditors yeah. at a pound, a penny in the pound mm. or whatever it is. Mm. He said, well, that's not really fair, is it? Because you lend somebody money, yeah. you should get it back. Of course you should, yeah. You shouldn't get a penny and a pound back. It, it depends whether you're taking risks, and that's the way the financial world works. But mm. anyway, look, if you take it on 200 years, uh, my interpretation of, uh, of what some criminolog- criminologists are doing and the way that they're taking their research is that actually nobody will be a criminal in 200 years' time. How do you mean? It will not be your fault. It will be the way your brain is wired. What, you mean there'll be so much sort of um, lily-livered liberalness going on that basically everyone will not be blamed for any of their own actions? Well, you and I might say that, but mm-hmm. other people might say, no, this is a perfectly acceptable uh, interpretation of the way the human body works. Right. So what I'm saying is, you know the old expression, mad or bad? Yes. Uh, it's going to be that people were just born bad and it wasn't their fault. Oh, I see. Well, so, I mean, genetically, you're a criminal. Exactly. Right. That's what I'm saying. But so, how will they determine that? Well, this, it won't this is just the whole be, point. It won't just be hereditary, will it? No, this is the whole point. At the moment, genetically, you can uh, inherit, uh, like, cancer or something like that, yeah. right? Now, they... The, the, in two years' not, time, but, but not everyone who gets cancer has it genetically. No, no, they they don't. I agree. But what I'm saying is, you can be born with a medical complaint, which is not your fault. Yeah. In two hundred years' time, badness will be something you're born with, and it's not your fault. I see. You see what I mean? But then, presumably, if you take it down that road, you yeah. then must treat that in a way so that you can try to uh, outlaw that genetic uh, development. Yeah, abso- for example, absolutely. For example, you would take the view that uh, by looking at the chromosomes of the parents, yeah that actually certain children shouldn't be born. It's a very dangerous road to go it's down. It's a very dangerous road to go down. And by the way, you can't always, always see it coming. Mm. What I'm saying is there are parts of the brain which have never been discovered, right? Yeah, particularly we, parts of your brain. Uh, uh, parts of everybody's brain. Only about 5 or 10% of the brain, even to senior brain people like, you know, brain surgeons and yeah. neurologists, actually know what's going on in the brain. Yeah. Well, they still, I mean, they were still recently, I think I saw this yeah. on TV, they're, they're mm. trying to uh, slice the brain now, in a, um, and obviously not a live brain, yeah, but yeah. slice it very, very thinly. That's right, yeah. So they can out. examine the That's right. membrane of That's it. right. Now, right. what I'm saying is, there could be one area of the brain. Why are we talking brain. about this, by the way? Well, because this is from one it's of my criminology. Advanced, uh, yeah. I mean, this is like sort of advanced yeah. criminology. Yeah, that's about. right. It is. Advanced criminology. Yeah. Absolutely right. something they study in the FBI uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, School of Behaviour. Well, it's just something that I study, man. It's something that I study, you know? Yeah. And, and what I'm saying Clarice. is... What I'm saying is, it is perfectly possible that in 200 years' time, there won't be any criminals because it wasn't their well, fault. It was their brain. Yeah, but there'll still be criminals. You know... Pardon me for being rude. It was not me. It was my food. That's yeah, when you burp. That, that's right. not a crime. Well, actually, that's not by a the crime. Way. But what I'm saying is, in future, it might be. You know, no, no, no. Of course, it's not a crime. You know, it might be. You oh, know, dear. pardon me for striking for, him for dead. Beheading you? No, 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 no. It might. No, the the word the, the nursery rhyme might be. Yeah. Pardon me for striking him dead. Yeah. It was not me. It was my head. Yeah, you know good. what I mean. Very and, good. And, and then that's your get out clause. Yeah. You know that. Uh, well, they'll still be putting nothing to do with me. They'll still be putting people in broadboard. If they come out with that well, rubbish, well, when they're standing no, in the no, dock. No, no, but you, you know what I'm. No, there won't be docks. I know what you're you getting at. There won't be docks. There no. won't be trials because you, you well, say. What are you supposed to do with these people then? Well, this is what I'm saying. This is what society's got to cope with. You know, this guy suddenly walks into a police station mm. and says, "Look, you know, wasn't feeling very well today." Well, if there's no court crime. There won't mm. be any police stations either. Well, they they, they will to I order mean, to order society. And also, I mean, already yeah. you can't yeah. walk into a police station. Yeah. They're always locked up. Yeah, they are. That's true. Yeah, they have and, a phone on the outside. If you wish to report a crime, please ring this number. Yeah, can, well, that's why I've covered the police station, you yeah, prick. And you come in and you say, look, I wasn't feeling really good this morning. I'm sorry. Unfortunately, over breakfast, I massacred my parents <laughs> um, because I was, you know, I just wasn't having a good day. Yeah. And, and then the cops, oh, right, OK, well, you know, just sit over there and, and I'll just get on the phone to the, you know, the massacre parent specialist who, uh, who will come down and have a word with you. And but you they'll what I mean? still have to lock them up, though, won't they? Well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I whether you've thought this through. I have thought it through, but I don't know what the answers are. That's the problem. No. I've, I've identified the the situation. The I mean, to, uh, to be honest, mm. a lot of this 
has been triggered in my head by mm. the revival of that Bob uh, Geldof record. What, I don't like Monday? Uh, yeah, exactly. Right. You know, because the opening line is uh, the silicon chip inside the head was turned to overdrive. Yeah. Now, was it in, overload? Now, that woman, I, I remember I told you this, I think, live on air. I, I realised after re- reading about the case, she's done 34 years in jail since. Has she? Yeah. yeah. Um, she was, I think she was 16 then or 17. Yeah, she was a high school student. Yeah. 51, 52, now still in jail. Yeah. Now, I think in like 100 years' time, she won't go to jail because it will be deemed to have not been her fault. It was something that triggered in her brain, yeah, which she, which she uh, couldn't stop. You see I what I mean? See, I can see where you're going. Yeah. And I don't yeah. disagree with it entirely, but yeah. they'll still have to have some way of punishing people because you can't just allow well, people... Well, it won't be called punishment in well, future. It'll be, yeah, it'll be more correctional right. than it even is now. Well, OK. Yeah. But they, they can't allow people yeah. just to do whatever they wish no. and face absolutely no punishment of any kind. No, exactly. That can't happen. Well, no, it won't be called punishment. It will, it will literally... I mean, these days... They call the penitentiary correctional, right? Yeah. Because that's just a way of just explaining the system. Correctional centre. The correctional uh, sanatorium or something. But no, uh, the correctional centre. Correctional centre. Mm. But in future, it really will be... Oh, for instance, they might have to have an operation. Do you see what I mean? Because it might be so advanced. Yeah, but you see, again... In which, in which they take... You know, remember One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, the yeah. lobotomy thing? Yeah. That was supposed to solve a problem in the guy's head. Yeah. Didn't work, obviously. Well, it made but, him into a, into a, basically a vegetable. That's right, yeah. In 100 years' Runs time... Runs the That's what they used to give people. Yeah, that's right, yeah. In 100 years' time... Somebody who is, uh, you know, clearly... Never mind 100 years' time. Have you seen the time now? No, never mind this time. Never mind this time. Uh, clearly, in 100 years' time, somebody said, well, I've just asked my parents over breakfast. Oh, well, OK, well, don't worry. Look, we'll get you a consultant... Okay, some um, new parents. ...brain surgeon. And, and, he look, and he looks at the brain. He says, oh, well, that's because that bit of the brain there triggered that. We'll take that out. And they take it out, and, and it's like cancer, really. They've cured you of your illness, you yeah, see but, what I mean? but again, you're handing the power of God, if you yeah. wish to use that yeah. word, or whatever it is, you're hand, handing the power of creation yeah. to uh, a bunch of scientists stroke lawmakers yeah. who you may not wish to give that right to. But I think it'll come to that, because it's well. a lot cheaper and easier than locking somebody up for the rest of their life uh, in, a, in a very expensive prison. Mm. There's no need for it if you can remove the, the element that... Why can't you say this seriously? Sent me a picture of yeah. Porky's dinner party, mm. which is from mm. uh, one of the Lecter movies, where the guy's got half his head cut off. Oh, dear me, I hate that. <laughs> That's not nice, is it, at all? Now, let's uh, yes. have something slightly cheerier here now. Okay. This is from Rachel. Okay. She says, it's my birthday today and I'm in work. Would love a shout-out to take my boss by surprise. And where is this lady? Uh, I don't know where she's Geographic working. Geographic clue, she's working um, now. She's, she's probably on the other side of the world. According to Twitter, she's from Glossop, or she's in Glossop. Oh, well, maybe she's working on a late uh, overnight shift or something. And the lady's name is? Uh, her name is Rachel. And it's her birthday, is it? It's her birthday, apparently. Right. Happy birthday you to, to you. It. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Rachel. Happy birthday to you. How about that? Very good. This is talking. Tell me why I don't like Mondays. Tell me why I don't like Mondays. Tell me why I don't like Mondays. I want to shoot. Ooh. The whole day down. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics, of course. Uh, we're on Saturday and Sunday this weekend. Yeah, uh, brilliant. So Saturday from 11 mm-hmm. uh, on the warm up, and then the warm yeah. down, it's being yeah. called rather yeah. cleverly, yeah. on Sunday between 4 and 6. Exactly. Uh, there'll be some Premier League action going on there as yeah, well. Uh, we'll will. know, of course, by that time what Everton have done against Hull. Yeah. Uh, and we'll know, uh, I think it's a Manchester City Liverpool game, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Manchester on uh, uh, Sunday afternoon. Yeah, I think you're right. Uh, now, here's one from Mitchell. He says, yeah. Hey, MG, any news on a date for the New York show? Heard you mentioned September, mm-hmm. but no specific date. No, we're still working on that. Uh, uh, we may have something for you yeah. uh, in Pretty the next couple of weeks. negotiations, I have but, to say. Uh, yeah, but, not easy uh, to set up a, no. a show 3,000 miles away, so, uh, so we shall see. We do these things not because they are easy, but because <laughs> they are hard. <laughs> Who was that? Um, was it not something to do with Kennedy? It was John F. Kennedy, it was John F. Kennedy on the, it? It was about moon the moon probe. The moon yeah. probe. Yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. the peak says, how about Krakatoa? Mm-hmm. Uh, just your average volcanic rock. You stick to impressing your chums by taking them up the Oxo Tower, Porky. I don't know whether he's talking about you or me. You don't really go to the it? Oxo Tower. Yeah. You've, you've only been to the Oxford Tower about three times in your life, haven't you? No, I've been there a few more times than that. Oh, I, mean, I mean, it used to be your sort of lunchtime drinking emporium, it was. didn't it, when you were at the Express? Yeah. They used to do a great wine there, right, called yeah. Mad Fish. Mad Fish. Which was an Australian, mm. I think it was a Chardonnay. Yes. And it wasn't available in many places, and it was brilliant. It was yes. about 55 quid a bottle in there. Uh, how uh, much? About 55. Mm. Um, and we, myself and a colleague used yep. to know that if we'd, if we'd breached the third mm-hmm. bottle mm-hmm. and gone into the fourth bottle... Yep. 
then uh, we knew that that was probably overdoing it. Fourth bottle of lunchtime? Yeah. What, you and one colleague? Yeah. That's disgraceful. Why? That is so unprofessional, I have to say. Eh? Unprofessional. What do you what mean What job did you have in those days? Uh, I think I was the uh, foreign editor. So you would go back then and start ringing people around the world and demanding great stories yeah. about things Papers that weren't happening. sold a lot more copies then than it did now. Yeah, well, uh, every newspaper I've left has always declined massively after I've gone. No, it's always declined That's massively while you were there. No. Now, no. I've got, before we do the Porky quiz, right? Yes. Uh, I've got another little uh, mini quiz for you, which oh, is yes. not really a quiz as such. But the headline on what I'm looking at says, How nice are you? Yes. You remember we talked about this the other day? Um, I think uh, it might have been when we were on yes, Sky. Yes, I do, actually, yes. That most people are actually not as nice as they think they are. They oh, think excuse they're me. much can I, nicer can than I they really are. Can I just show you, by the way, these are real pictures of people in terror on this slope. Yeah, I know, I was okay? thinking about that earlier. All published in the papers tomorrow morning. I never said I was in terror. I no, just said it was an interesting picture to put out because yeah. it was timely, given what is not currently yeah. going on. I mean, I've been talk- uh, I saw those, that, that newspaper piece about an hour ago. Yes, but You've I saw these pictures it. on the BBC. Tourist runners, the eruption yeah, begins. Video. One woman's thrown to the ground by the shocks. Yeah. A man wipes away blood as tourists escape in a bus. I mean, these are the people who are terrified. Not, yeah, of course uh, they're terrified because, because they were right mm, next to the eruption. Mm. You yeah. know, I never said that I was terrified. I never said that I was brave. I just right. said that I've got pictures of me up Etna, which okay. I think a lot of people would like to see. And in fact, the the uh, uh, the comments underneath the yeah. picture that I've put out uh, would bear me out. Right, okay. to be honest. Now, uh, here's the thing. Right, um, people think they're nice. Yes. Right? I don't have any confidence whatsoever that you will come out of this quiz as a nice person. Okay, because I know that you're not. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, how about question one? Uh, without criticism, I wouldn't recognise how to be successful. Do you agree with that? Disagree with it? Um, strongly agree strongly I, disagree I agree with that you strongly agree strongly agree so you like criticism do you yes I find it uh, constructive you've never ag- you, every time anybody's ever criticised yeah. you, you you abuse them no no not at all if somebody sends in some, alright well I'll tell you what let's get some people to criticise you on Twitter and see how you react ok alright yes question number two mm. nothing great was ever achieved by staying in your comfort zone do you agree or disagree totally agree Strongly agree. Strongly agree. All right. Strongly agree. Because you've got six points. Yeah. Uh, however strongly I feel about a situation, I will rein in my opinions if I feel it might cause distress to others. Uh, no, I strongly disagree. Yeah, strongly disagree. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, a little Not self- because I want to hurt other people, but because you need to know the truth. Yeah. A little self-deprecation goes a long way. A little... Self-deprecation. Self-deprecation. I know you don't even know what that means. Yeah, I strongly agree with that. You do not. I do, and I practice when it. I strongly agree. When was the last time that you self-deprecated? I strongly agree. Uh, every negative has a positive. You just have to see an alternative perspective. I strongly agree. OK. Strongly agree. See, again, you're giving out different answers mm. to the ones that are actually the truth. Mm. I trust my initial... You are really uh, actually a classic psychopath. Don't be ridiculous. You are, because no. you know how to get around these no, quizzes no. to get the right score. No, 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 no. That's how clever you are. No, 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 come on. It's you, quite, you, inf- in, it's I'm quite invidious. I'm entitled to answer any way I want, so just get on with it, I okay? trust my initial instincts and judge situations based on them. I strongly agree. OK. Mm. <laughs> uh, there is no reason to lose your sense of humour. I can laugh in almost every situation. I agree. Just agree? Yes. OK. Let's see. There is no reason to lose your sense of humour. Oh, sorry, I've just done that one. Yes. Sorry. You're all right. Uh, letting all right. go of mistakes is important. I strongly agree. You strongly agree with that? Strongly agree. OK, well, you made plenty of them. Uh, all conflict could benefit from being dealt with in the here and now, not putting it off until a later date. I strongly agree. OK. <laughs> yes. This is great. Yes. Uh, if I see someone in trouble, I'll go to help them, even if others just seem to be onlookers. I strongly agree. What about the guy who had the flat tyre? No, I strongly agree. And you said you had to go somewhere because you didn't want to help him. I, I, well, I, I'm sorry, I'm not accepting that as an answer. No, I, you have to accept that. There, there no. were particular you circumstances. Left that, you left that guy. There were particular you circumstances. No, I wanted to help, but I, and I had to postpone well, my help. I, can't I let strongly you have, agree. I can't let you have strongly agree. You cannot... I'll uh, give you a agree. You can, no, no, you cannot censor my answers. Yeah, but you also I have to strongly be agree. You have to be truthful, OK? Uh, I often shed a tear if something moves me on TV or in a film. Both from sadness and or joy. <laughs> you've I, never cried. I agree. Me. I agree. No, you said you've never you've never cried. I agree. You've said you've never cried. This is this is this is me revealing some of my private life. I agree. Well, you told me you never you never. So which is it? Have you cried or not? I agree. You agree with what? I agree with the question. Please. Yeah. No, no, because you've it's always said, no. I can't accept that. You've always said that you don't you don't cry. You've never cried. Uh, look, no, don't I'm try and get around you, the, don't I try agree. and get around the study. I'm not getting around the study. OK. Mm-hmm. OK, question number 12. Yes. When I get angry, I think it's better to show it rather than keep it to myself. Uh, I don't necessarily agree with that. 
Well, you have to agree or disagree. I disagree. You disagree. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I find it as easy to list my strengths as I do my weaknesses. Uh, I strongly agree. What, what are your weaknesses? I don't have many. You don't have I, any? Uh, uh, no, well, I, said, I, said, I said I don't have many. Right. Do not twist my words. Okay. I strongly agree. I am an open book. <laughs> I am an, yeah, I, yeah, I am an open book. You're not. I am. You're rubbish. Of course I am. There's nobody more open than me. I How strongly old are agree. You? I'm in. I'm approach. I am in early middle age, and that's all one needs to know. What shirt size are you? X. I yeah. keep telling you. Well, I strongly I'm not, agree. Well, I'm not allowing you to agree with that. Strongly disagree. Uh, when socialising, I prefer to be one on one rather than in groups. I strongly agree. <laughs> you prefer to be one, actually. Don't no, you? no. Yeah. Well, I strongly agree. I'm I mean, very group, specific. Groups in my, can be boring and I'm, loathsome. I am very specific in my emotional vocabulary. I can easily describe just how I am feeling. I strongly agree. That's rubbish. No, I'm a communicator. And How I'm are you good feeling at it. now? I'm a top communicator. How I strongly feeling? agree. How are you feeling now? I'm feeling good. Are you? Yes. Uh, I don't get offended easily. I strongly agree. <laughs> I strongly agree. You spend half your life being offended. No, I don't. Being flawed is more attractive than being perfect. I disagree. Yeah, I think you would. Yes. As you think people should be. Mm. I'm in charge of my own happiness. I strongly agree. Really? Yes, strongly agree. You're happy at the moment? Yes, I'm happy. All right. Yes. Okay, saying no to others and myself can be empowering. Eh? Saying no to others. Can, yeah, I strongly uh, agree. I strongly agree. I strongly agree. strongly agree. So you do say no to people? Yeah. Do you say no to people? Yes, I strongly agree. Okay. Mm. All right, well, that's the end of the survey. Right, okay. I'll give you a score a little yeah. while later yeah. on. Yeah, and then you'll interpret the score, I hope. Well, yeah, because it will give you... Yes. Uh, it's, it's down yes. here it says, depending on what number you have, it yes. will tell you how nice you are. Yeah, good, good, So good. I'll add it all up and I'll tell you later. Good, good, good. Because we haven't got a lot of time now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because we've yeah, now yeah. got to do the porky quiz in a little while. Right. Um, um, are you ready for it? I'm ready for it, indeed, yeah. Listen, we're going to play uh, one disc before the end of the show, OK? One disc? Yeah, and, and it's amazing. Do you know what it's going to be? It's going to be, and darling, you look beautiful tonight. Do you mean uh, wonderful tonight? Wonderful tonight. And darling, Eric Clapton. Look tonight. Eric Clapton. OK. And do you know why we're going to play that? Because I look wonderful? No, no, not because you look... No, you don't look wonderful. You look ghastly and gross, as usual. <laughs> Uh, it is. Be- it is because why uh, today is the seventy third birthday of Patty Boyd. Okay, and Patty Boyd, of course, was the ex wife of both George Harrison yes. and Eric Clapton. Yes, the inspiration between the Clapton songs Layla mm. and Wonderful Tonight, and probably the inspiration between George Harrison something. Yeah, well, I mean, she believes that, and she's been uh, yeah. told that, that yeah. she is, and she's said that many times, but yeah. I've got my doubts, to be honest. But it's a great yeah. song, so I don't mind hearing it. Yeah, absolutely. Coming up, it's the Porky Quiz. Yes. <laughs> Now live on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, although some Excellent. people are saying we were live on Facebook, I just couldn't see it. No, but I just wanted to make it. sure no, that we no, were doing no. it right. So we are now live on Facebook. Excellent. Uh, it is time for the Porky Quiz. Excellent. Uh, and I'm delighted to say that mm-hmm. I'm now uh, being handed, as you can see, yes. the questions for with the, the quiz. With the two sheets of uh, the questions. Shakespeare yeah. quiz. Now, would you like yeah. to? Um, uh, would you like to see inside the envelope? No, no, no. I'm no. quite happy to show no, it to I'm you. I'm not going to be that else. petty. I'm not going to be that there petty. There is only one sheet of questions, right? And here it is. And you can take the envelope to ensure that I don't have access to. It. Yeah. I've taken out one sheet. Uh, all right, so I don't want you accusing anybody of getting anything, uh, you know, right, wrong, or indifferent. Right. Mm. Now, you seem to have things in front of you, um, which people can see. Only my, uh, only a couple of my journals. And, yeah, well, you uh, don't need anything in front of you. Well, what do you want to do? Throw it all away? I want you just to move it to the side. No, no, I'm not moving to the side because I've Why got not? to reconstruct the whole desk. There's nothing there. Reconstruct the desk. Yeah, there's nothing there that can impossibly. It's been suggested to me be in the assisted. past. That you should be given, uh, that people can tweet you uh, the answers. Oh, Leah, like how? Well, if you give me the phone, then you won't. That won't happen. Well, okay, I will put my phone over here so you can see it. I'm okay. not giving it to you. It's over there. Why don't you want to give it to me? Because you might interfere. Because I with might it. see the signs, the, the, no. the things coming up. No, 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 no. You might uh, gerrymander my phone. You might interfere right. with it. You might. Uh, uh, I've got no interest in gerrymandering you your phone. You might divulge information okay. from it. All right. right, go on. Are you ready for question number one? Now, the new rules are as yes, follows, OK? Yes, yes. Uh, you are going to be asked a question. Yeah. I will then give you three choices. And yeah. the answer will either be A, B or C. Right. And that will be the question that I will then ask you. OK. okay? Question number one. Yes. From which play is this quote taken? 
listen carefully, all the world's a stage and all the men and women are merely players. Yes. Is it A, Romeo, uh, sorry, Twelfth Night? Is it B, Romeo and Juliet? Yes. Or is it C, As You Like It? Right. What were the first two? Pardon? Oh, sorry, do you know what I didn't do? What? Uh, if it's right, uh, you will hear this sound. Right. He is sure possessed, madam. Uh, and if it's wrong, you will hear this sound. I am as mad as he... Right, That's okay. Good, isn't it? What were the uh, what were the first want, two? Please? Do you want them again? Uh, A is Twelfth Night. Yes. B of Romeo and Juliet. Right. Uh, the answer to that one is Romeo and Juliet. Uh, incorrect. No. I am as mad as he. It is in fact as you like it. As you like it. Question mm. number two. This is another quote. Right. Uh, some are born great. Yes. Some achieve greatness, mm. and some have greatness thrust upon them. Right. Uh, is it answer A? Macbeth? Mm. Is it answer B, Twelfth Night? Yeah. Or is it answer C, Richard the Third? Richard the Third. Right, OK. Now then, thinking aloud here, thinking aloud. Definitely not Macbeth. I'm a student of Macbeth. I know every line of every... Um, uh, no, really? Uh, what do you call it uh, when a play's done? It's not chapters, is it? It's uh, acts. I know every line of every act. Yeah. Uh, which leaves it to be... What was the second one? Uh, the second one was Twelfth Night. Twelfth Night. And the third one was Richard the Third. And this sounds to me like, uh, you know, Richard the Third. of course, that was a uh, that was a, all about a brutal battle and that kind of stuff. Twelfth Night was a bit of a sort of dipso um, sort of comedy. So I'm going for Richard the Third. Incorrect. No! I am as mad as he... You should have gone for Twelfth Night. Twelfth Night. Question number three. Right. King Lear battles his madness, watched by his three daughters. Yes. Who is the eldest? Uh, is it A, Regan? Yeah. Is it B, Goneril? Yeah. Or is it C, Cordelia? Uh, right, thinking aloud here, it's a very unfortunate name for a lady, isn't it, to be called Gonorrhea? It's not Gonorrhea. Yeah. <laughs> it was. It's Gonorrhea. No. It's not oh, Gonorrhea. Really? really? Oh, okay. It's Cordelia. Uh, uh, or... Yeah. yeah <laughs> or Gonorrhea. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, so they've got three daughters. One of them's called right. Gonorrhea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The other yeah. one's syphilis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 don't be silly. Don't be and silly. The other Come one's, on, yeah. Go on, it's a family show. OK. Right, uh, OK, so now, uh, you see, I'm a, I'm a bit of a student of King Lear. Oh, yeah. Because, I, you know, uh, when he's uh, cast out uh, onto the uh, heath, you know, uh, in the wilds. Yeah, yeah. And he's, uh, one of his famous lines is, uh, blow, blow, thy evil winds, crack thy cheeks, you know? Is it? Yeah. OK. Yeah, yeah. Well, that doesn't get and you then, any extra points. And then his, his daughter's come after him to try and rescue him, but I think by that time, hasn't somebody taken his eyes out or something with a rope? Well, you're the expert. Yeah. Uh, I would say the answer to that one is, without a shadow of a doubt, Cordelia. Cordelia is not, in fact, no. the oldest. Uh, is I it am correct? as mad as he... You should have gone with uh, Goneril. Goneril. All right, here's another quote for you. Okay. All that glisters is not gold. Yes. Is a quote from the Merchant of Venice. Yes, that's right. Who says it? Who says it? Yes. Well, you've got to give me a choice of three. Oh, yeah, I've got to do that. Yeah, right? yeah, thank All you. Right, question uh, is A is Portia. Portia. B, uh, the Prince of Morocco. Yeah. And C, Shylock. You're right. OK, I know the answer to this one. Yeah. It's with a, it's not Shylock because he's the money lender, and portrayed as a bit of a you know uh, a villain. Uh, who's the other guy? The prince. Uh, the prince of Morocco. Not the prince. Not uh, the prince of Morocco. Or Portia. I think it's Portia. So uh, the answer to this one is a Portia. Incorrect. No. I am as mad as he. <laughs> it's the prince of Morocco. Prince of Morocco. You've got zero out of four. Yeah. Well, I mean, You've these got are... three choices here. No, these are awkward questions. Right. Mm. Question number five. How many questions are there, by the way? There's ten. Oh, plenty of time to There's make up. There's always ten. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the course of true love never did run smooth. Yes. Uh, is a quote from which play? Uh, is it A, mm. A Midsummer Night's Dream? Yeah. Is it B, Romeo and Juliet? Yeah. Or is it C, Hamlet? Right, OK. It's definitely not Hamlet, because that's, uh, that's a real uh, nasty, isn't it, you know? Hamlet and... Uh, one of uh, the famous video nasties. Yeah, all about murdering people and all that. Uh, so that leaves us with what? Midsummer Night's Dream, yeah, and the other one is what? Uh, Romeo and Juliet. Right, I know this one. It's not Romeo and Juliet, you know... Um, because the famous line in that one was, um, Romeo, Romeo, where art thou, Romeo? When well, she's wherefore hanging from the balcony. Thou? Wherefore art thou? So it's got to be well, Midsummer's Night. She's not hanging from the balcony, is she? It, no, I didn't say that, no. You just said she was hanging from the balcony. Are you trying to stop me giving you the right answer now? No, I'm just trying to talk to you about Shakespeare. So, thinking aloud here, yeah. that brings me to the inescapable collusion, uh, c conclusion. Collusion? Conclusion. Collusion? Who are you colluding with? No, conclusion. Oh, what a Freudian slip that was. Conclusion that it is Midsummer's Night's Dream. Midsummer's Night's Dream? Yes. You want to say that again? Midsummer Night's Dream. Correct. Yay! Yes, 
Yes. Woo-hoo-hoo. I knew I was on the turn. Uh, that's one out of five. You're yeah, on the turn, yeah. are you? Yeah, I was on the turn. Question yeah. number six. Yes. Uh, Shakespeare wrote a collection of sonnets addressed to a young man and a woman. Yeah. Uh, which number sonnet is this one? And the quote is, shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Right. It's, you... it's known as sonnet number something, right? Is it A, yeah. sonnet number 153? Yeah. Uh, is it B, yeah. uh, sonnet 18? Yeah. Or is it C, sonnet 21? Ah, yes, OK. One, what was the first figure? 153. 153, 18 or 21? Yeah. Yes, interesting, interesting. Shall I compare thee? See, that's part of a quote which goes on. Shall I compare thee to an English rose? Or shall I compare thee to what? A summer's day. A summer's day. Yeah. Mm. OK, right, 18, 21, or 153, right? The 153's a weird number, isn't it, really? you know. Well, it depends. I don't think he wrote 153 sonnets, so I think that... Uh, this is thinking aloud, by the way, thinking aloud. Mm. That, uh, that's down I to 18. Give you that's clues. Clues. Right, I'm going to go for yeah. sonnet number 21. Incorrect. No! I am as mad as he... It was, in fact, number uh, 18. I was going to go for 18. I should have gone 18, shouldn't uh, I? And he did write 18. more than um, 153 sonnets. Yeah, it was close. That was very close. That. I should get half a point for that, really. Uh, now, here's another quote. Mm. Why, do you yeah. get, why do you get half a point? This is a, well, you get three choices yeah, here, right? Yeah, you don't yeah. get half a point for anything. No, it's second, though, wasn't um, it? This yeah. is very Midsummer Madness, okay. is the quote. Uh, from which play does it come? Henry IV, mm. A, mm. B, The Tempest, or yeah. C, Twelfth Night? What's the quote again? This is very Midsummer Madness. Mm, Twelfth Night. Now that's about Christmas, so it could be. Mid- that can't be with some madness. Think it aloud. Think it aloud. Tempest could be the tempest. Could be. Could be talking about you know the fact that the sea is a bit tempest- tempestuous. Tempestuous. I know. Uh, what's the other one? The other one. Uh, the other one was Henry the Fourth. Henry the Fourth. Yeah. yeah. I'm going for. Mm. Wait for it. The tempest. Uh, incorrect. No. I am as mad as he. Uh, it's actually Twelfth Night. <laughs> so far, you got one out of seven. Well, you know, I don't like the formula of this uh, new quiz because it doesn't give me enough uh, brain thinking time. Mm. Mm. Uh, question number eight, mm-hmm. another quote. Yes. Uh, I cannot tell what the Dickens his name is. Yes. Uh, is this from A, yeah. Timor of Athens, B, The Merry Wives of Windsor, yeah. or C, Hamlet? What's the quote again? Uh, I cannot tell what the Dickens his name is. The Dickens his name is. Mm. Right, OK, now then, uh, it's not from Hamlet, because that's the one about all the murder and all that kind of stuff, King of Scotland um, and all that kind of stuff. King of Scotland and all that kind of stuff. Oh, no, sorry, no, that was something to do with Scandinavia, Hamlet, wasn't it? Sorry, yeah, Macbeth was, was the King of Scotland. Denmark, yeah, Denmark, Macbeth was right. Scotland, yeah. Yeah. Alas! I can only assume the Merry Wives of Windsor was about Windsor. Alas, poor oh, yeah. Yorick. For I knew him well. Yorick. Yorick, yeah. You mean Yorick? Yorick, yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, Yorick. <laughs> Yorick, yeah. I've just met your friend uh, Syphilis. What was the name of the girl? No, gonorrhea. Gonorrhea, yeah. <laughs> uh, let me just think this one through. Now, what's the what's the three again? Sorry. OK, uh, Timor of Athens, mm. The Merry Wives of Windsor, yeah. or Hamlet? Right. A, B or C. OK. Uh I mean, at this point, you might as well just pick a number. No, no, no. I don't just pick numbers. I, no idea I analyse it in my brain. It is the Merry Wives of Windsor. That is correct. Hooray! He is sure ooh, 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 ooh. That's two out of eight. Thank you. Question number nine. See, that's 25%. That's a pass. Two out of eight. Now, where do you get 25% as a pass, pass in anything? It's a pass. A pass. It is not a pass it is, in anything. It is, it is. 50% is anyway, a pass. Anyway, I can get I can get this up to four. Go on. OK. Mm-hmm. Which of these teams did Craig Shakespeare not play for? Right. Qua- uh, a, Walsall. Yeah. B. Sheffield United. Yeah. C. Hednesford Town. Um, okay. He started his career at Walsall. He only spent a year at Sheffield Wednesday, mm. so I doubt if he played for Sheffield United. And he did play for Hensford, who were non-league. So I'm going to go for Sheffield United. Correct. Hey, hey, hey. He is oh, sure possessed. Woo, 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 woo. That Thank is you. that is three out of nine. Thank can you. you make it four out of ten? See, that's thirty-three percent. That is a definite pass. Three. No, it's not. It is. You don't get a pass for thirty-three well, percent. What, what sort of mad college no. world do you no, live? No, 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 no. Come on, get on with it. Now on we know it. why. Now you I'm say on a roll. You, you see, so trying to slow A's. it down. I'm not trying to slow it down. Yeah, not at all. Yeah. Uh, question number ten: mm. How many plays did Shakespeare write? How many was it? How many plays did yeah. Shakespeare write? Yes. Was it A thirty-eight? Yeah. Thirty-eight. Was it B thirty-five? Yeah. Or was it C, 37? Now, does this include things other than plays? Only plays. 
You sure? I'm sure. Because some pieces that he wrote, it's debatable whether they were plays or sonnets or whatever. Well, you know sonnets, what I mean? uh, the number is 154, mm. as per the earlier question. So mm. clearly this does not include sonnets. Right. And what's the, what's the alternative numbers again, please? 38, 35 or 37. 38, 35, 37. Right. Well, he was very prolific. So that makes me think he wrote a lot of plays, right? But there's not a big difference between 38 and 37. That's the problem. Well, there is a lot of difference in the 38 and 37. And there's not a big difference between 37 and 35. Mm. See, do you know what? Somebody didn't know the business would go for the median. They'd go for the 37. Thinking aloud, just thinking aloud. How is that the median? Uh, well, it's between 35 and 38 in, oh, see, in the answers. It's you see not what I mean? technically the median, though, is it? Uh, no, so it's, it's the middle closer one. closer to 38 it's than the 35. One. Uh, you see, I'm thinking almost certainly it's 38, but it could be 37 or 35. I'm going to plump well, it could be four. Of them, I suppose. I'm going to plump four uh, because it's divisible by seven. 35. Incorrect. No! I am as mad as he... It is, in fact, 37. I should have said 37. Yes. But never mind. Uh, yeah. um, well, know, that's, that's pretty good uh, result, like, then. How did you like the new system? Uh, yeah, average. You preferred it to uh, the other well, system? average, average. Well, I'd like to tell you that you've done better in this system, but in fact, you've done just the same. Yeah. Three out of ten. Well, that's pretty good, that. Just about as useless as ever. So the one thing, good. the one constant that we have, whether we use Trivial Pursuit, yeah. whether we use yeah. the three yeah. uh, multiple choice question system yeah. or the straight one answer to one question system, three out of ten is what you always get. OK. This is Talk Sport. Alas, poor Yorick. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. That was the Porky quiz, and we've got some yep. great tweets coming in. Wilco says, Porky. Yeah. Guesswork should have got you 33 and a third percent, mm. but you still only got 30 percent. No, no, no. Hashtag plank. I don't guess. I, I apply science yeah. to it. And uh, Gemma says, MG, please tell Porky, yeah. I need 144 out of 200 to get a grade C. Really? And that is 72 percent. Yes, yeah. Well, you're taking the wrong exams. Uh, this is a great one here from Craig. He says, uh, what a comedy of errors this is, Porky. So bard. Oh, very get that? Good. Bard, B-A-R-D. Yeah, like the bard. Yeah. William Shakespeare. Why was he called the bard, by the way? Um, I don't know, actually. You can yeah. tell me, because you're yeah. a... a, a a, a, a student of Shakespeare. Well, it was called the Bard because uh, in those days it meant the greatest. You know what I mean? Is that right? Yeah. Definitely. Are you sure about that? I'm certain. Yeah, certain. Uh, Nick says, please give me yeah. your lotto numbers for the weekend, Porky, so I can cross them off my lines. Oh, that's very nice, uh, isn't it? Yeah. Dicky says, you know he's getting desperate when Porky tries to claim three out of ten is a good score. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Cola says, uh, Jim, rather, three out of ten, a monkey with a pointing stick could have done better. Uh, you see, I, I find these things so offensive. They I, are I offensive. just, don't, I, don't, I just don't worry about them. By the way, how did I do in the mini quiz before the big? Oh quiz? yes, actually, I've. Got to yeah. add these up. Yes. Uh, let's see now. So yeah. you've got um, uh, four plus three is seven. Mm -hmm. uh, plus four is eleven. Yep. Fifteen. Yep. Eighteen. Yep. Nineteen. Uh, Twenty-three. Uh, Twenty-four. Mm -hmm. Twenty. Twenty-six. Yep. Uh, let's see. Twenty-nine. Uh, and this is much higher than you should get. Probably thirty-two. Mm -hmm. um, Thirty-six. Thirty. Forty. All the way up to. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Oh, actually, minus three. I oh, know three. Mm. Forty-three. Mm. It means you are nice. You right, may, thank you. You may not have felt strongly about a number of these thank statements you. or behaviours, which means your self-awareness and response to others' feelings. Thank may, you. Hang on. May need improving. Try to put yourself in someone else's place mm. sometimes mm. to see so, their perspective. There you go. Uh, remember you're the, the time. You're on the very. No, hang on. You're on the very, very low side of no, nice. No, no. Three fifty. Friday, March the three fifty a.m. Uh, Friday, three, March the seventeenth. Okay. Uh, I am declared officially nice by my um, uh, nemesis, Mr. M.G. <laughs> Graham, right? Am I your nemesis Yeah, now? who's had to declare me nice. Who's had yeah. to declare me it nice. It says here, though, um, and I want you to take note of this, mm. uh, your self-awareness in response to others' feelings may need improving. Uh -huh, yeah, really? Well, that's yeah. what it says. Oh, yeah, you have to put a downer on it. No, that's what it says. Now then, uh, John, who is our, the master uh, ta tactician back there, technician, master tactician, has just played, uh, and darling, you look wonderful tonight. Wonderful tonight, yes. And I explained why we played that, didn't I? You said it was Paddy Boyd's birthday. It was Paddy Boyd's birthday, 73 today. Can 73? You, yeah, can 
Can you imagine Patty Boyd being 73? Do you know how old she was when she met George Harrison on the train? She was in her 20s, wasn't she? Uh, No, uh, when she met George Harrison on the train in Hard Day's Night, which is where they first set eyes on each other, Mm. and he was absolutely transfixed by her long blonde hair, her slightly protruding teeth, her slim and uh, nymph-like frame. Uh, She was 19 years of age. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, I've watched, I think it's the Martin Scorsese um, Mm. uh, uh, documentary, you know, which which I've got, if you want to borrow it, by the way. Um, on George is, Harrison. On George Harrison, yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? Yeah. yeah it's when um, he's got his, uh, the, the cover pictures of him in the swimming pool with his head above the yes, water. Yes, and, he's, and there's a lot of footage of him in his big garden That's right. and his son's talking and his That's wife's right. talking. Yeah. It's, it's very poignant, actually. It is, yeah. Because his wife, he was he obviously died. Uh, mm. a very busy man in the, in the sort of bedroom area. Yeah, and yeah. his wife is clearly quite upset about all that. Yeah, you know, that's She right, talks yeah. about it. But, but Patty Boyd appears mm. as if she was the great inspiration, as a lot, of, a lot of these women often do. Yes. For all sorts of songs, like you said, for something, something. Um, for Wonderful Tonight. That's right. I mean, the way that some of these women mm. talk, you would think that without them, yeah. you know, Eric Clapton and George Harrison would never have written anything. No, that's right. Which is always a slight Who do you think was his inspiration for one of his records, which I was amazed ever got was allowed to be released? Oh. Cocaine. What? Well, Cocaine wasn't written by him. It was J.J. Cale's song. Oh, was it? Yeah. Yeah, well, he sang it a lot, didn't he, at these concerts and things. He did. You know, became, yeah. Well, he sang, he, it was one of his kind of signature tunes. It was, but yeah. It wasn't, he wasn't actually his composition. Didn't realise that. In the same way that I Shot the Sheriff was not. I shot the sheriff. Yeah. That was uh, Bob Marley. It was. But I exactly. never shot the deputy down. Ian says this. Maybe you should try giving Porky the ten answers on a piece of paper mm-hmm. and all he's got to do is match them up to the questions. Oh, yeah, they're very good, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, very That's funny. That's a good idea. Now, you said something earlier. You said you couldn't believe that uh, nobody was making an issue of the fact that uh, Wayne Rooney's been axed from England for the first time. Yes, that's right. Uh, I've just been given tomorrow morning's uh, back page of The Times, The oh. Thunder, one of the world's most famous newspapers, Yes, who splash on the back says, as Rooney axed by England for first time. Well, there you are. See, yeah. I told you people would start picking yeah. it up after they heard me yeah, saying it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and the back page of the Sun says, Brutal. Yeah. Uh, Wayne axed and no longer captain. Mm, mm. And some people had been writing in earlier to say, Oh, yo, you got it wrong. He's injured. He's actually yeah. not injured because he may be available to play for Manchester United. Yes. Uh, Jose Mourinho has said this weekend against Middlesbrough. Yes. Who do you think is going to be the new Middlesbrough manager, by the way? I don't know. After Karanka was given his marching orders. I have no idea. It definitely won't be Steve uh, McLaren. Are you sure? Uh, you say in England, like you say in G England? No, it won't be Because, him. I mean, this is another one of those stories that I was quite mm. surprised about, because Karanka, who was yeah. a mate of Jose Mourinho's, right, yeah. was thought to be doing rather well up in Middlesbrough until quite recently, wasn't he? They had the best um, defensive record in terms of Indeed. letting goals in. Indeed. Um, after Spurs. Yeah. And they were doing really well, and suddenly Absolutely. they just kind of lost the plot. Absolutely. Two other football issues here to pick up on. Yeah. Uh, even Gareth Southgate had to reveal that Theo wasn't chuffed to bits to get the call. He actually said that no. when dropping Theo Walcott. Uh-huh. Um, he said that he said to him, Walcott said to Gareth Southgate, I'm one of the leading scorers in the league, why have I been dropped? Yeah. And uh, Southgate said to him, um, I, I'm not ruling you out, but I think it's a better opportunity for me to look at one or two others. Well, also, let's face it. I mean, the two games that we're talking about here... One's a friendly, friendly and, against and one, Germany. one is a, 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 you know, an obvious win. An obvious win against in, Lithuania. Yeah, absolutely. It? The other thing, by the way, last night, we haven't oh, really on, touched look, on I'm it. I'm just reading here. For Nigel Pearson yeah. is the early favourite to succeed Karank. Yeah, he will be, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, I suppose he will be. So, I guess, um, uh, you know... We didn't really even mention the fact that Manchester United beat Rostov 1-0 and therefore go through 2-1 on aggregate in the Europa Well, we, we, we but, mentioned it in passing, I think. Yeah, but you know the most interesting aspect of that game mm. is that um, uh, Jose, Jose yeah. Mourinho yeah. started dishing out bananas to his players during the game. Bananas? Yeah. What, at half-time? No, during the game. Well, are you allowed to eat during the game? What, do you mean actually like from the sidelines? Yes, from the sidelines. What, so somebody's on the pitch eating a banana? Yes, somebody's on the pitch eating a the banana. There's a picture here of Marcus Rojo. Uh, Rojo. Rojo, who was uh, tucking into a banana on the pitch. Really? It's a picture of uh, Ashley Young, uh, who was substitute on the touchline, being told to consume a banana. Well, they're very good for energy. You know, There's Tiger a... Woods always used to eat two on the way around the golf course. Eh? Uh, two, did he? Yeah. Did he, really? Yeah. yeah, well, I'll tell you what. It but became... I've never seen on a football pitch, though. No, it became the trendy food in all sorts of newsrooms and on the news floor here in um, uh, radio stations for years. Well, it's, I mean, it's a very, very good source of potassium and yeah. of, of iron, I think, as so well. So what does that do for you? Well, it just gives you energy. And it's without... It gives you energy? Yeah. Ah. And it, and because, I mean, fruit, all fruit has sugar in it, but it, it doesn't give you a sugar sort of come down. Do you know what you shouldn't eat a lot of? Don't eat a lot of apples. There's really? so much sugar content yeah. in apple that right. it settles in your stomach. Mm. If you ate two apples a day, yeah. you'd probably... 
uh, contracts some terrible diabetic disease or something. Well, what about an apple a day keeps the doctor away? What well, that? that's questionable, that. And by the way, really? I don't scare anybody who does eat two apples a day hmm. because I'm not a medical expert. That's just my own um, valid opinion and should not be taken seriously necessarily. No, well, like everything else you say. What? <laughs> <laughs> that was talk sport. <laughs> King Lear battles his madness, watched by his three daughters. Yes. Who is the eldest? Uh, is it A, Regan? Yeah. Is it B, Goneril? Yeah. Or is it C, Cordelia? Uh, right, thinking aloud here, it's a very unfortunate name for a lady, isn't it, to be called Gonorrhea? It's not Gonorrhea. Mm. <laughs>